TikTok, time to rock. How's everyone doing this evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it may be, wherever you're watching from all over the universe. I am your friendly neighborhood philosopher, D. Wood, and with me is a man who has many na many names, many, many names, many, many nicknames and many names. They call him the Assyrian Encyclopedia. They call him Triple B. They call him Shameless, the man who has no shame. How are you Shameless. doing? Shameless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want You good? Yeah, no, no. I was just noticing when I went live, it's for some reason I got like this angry face. I look and then You it's always like, have an angry, yeah. Well, it's because you're an angry dude. Yeah, I came up. My mother's womb angry. <sighs> All right. Well, Sam, I don't know about you, but I've been having fun these last couple live streams. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is fun wrecking Islam for the glory of Jesus Christ and magnifying the name of Jesus Christ. But in one way, it tires me out hearing the same objections. But it's, again, it's necessary and vital and important that we have to repeat things over and over again until it becomes second nature by the power of the Holy Spirit and until it sinks in by the power of the Holy Spirit and Muslims realize and awaken to the fact Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the living Lord, the risen Lord, and Muhammad is a false prophet, and turn to him to be saved. And may the Lord Jesus bless this session, bless you and me, strengthen us to speak truth clearly without error, and fill us with the Spirit to convict Muslims, strengthen the church for the glory of Jesus. Amen, Lord Jesus. Have your way. We need you. Not just to teach, but to live your word in Jesus' name. So let's do it. Amen. Pedro Jr. says, sup, sup. And David, you look good in black. Yep, me and Johnny Cash. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, he's right. You do. Go away from my window. All right. All right. At your own chosen speed. Go ahead. All right. Here, 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 Cash. Where are you going? Speaking of uh, <laughs> answering the same things over and over again, Islam is the truth, says Christianity is a false and pagan religion. They believe in this equation. One plus one plus one equals three gods. Okay. Actually, actually, we don't, so that's just a flat-out lie. We believe in one person plus one person plus one person equals three persons within the one nature of God. Exactly. Why? Because that's what, that's what God revealed in scriptures that your Quran affirms as the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God. By the way, just to let you know, I think you have a Muslim saying, Elias Pascalis. I hope the comment section will not be a war between Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant. And we amen that, brother. And he's not a Muslim. I'm sorry. I thought I was a Muslim. Forgive me. Elias, he must be an Orthodox. Yep. Praise the Lord <clears> Jesus <throat> Christ. That's one thing we want to share <clears throat> right off the bat. We <clears throat> don't want the Roman Catholics or the Orthodox or the Protestants to fight in the comment section. We don't want this to be a sectarian debate where Satan comes in and tries to use this topic to divide the body. Yeah, guys. We want us to focus on Jesus Christ, on the glory of Jesus Christ exposing Islam, because you're going to see how we're going to deal with the topic. No one's going to be offended because we're not here to attack Catholics, Orthodox, or Protestant. We're here to see, show Muslims what the Quran tells them about this issue as we glorify Jesus Christ. Yeah, guys. So, be clear. Yeah, so if you guys are uh, trying to start arguments that we're not trying to deal with, uh, you need to carry that stuff to another channel because I'll start blocking. Yeah. So it's already started. Wrong. Nordic says, yeah, already started. The, uh, the Orthodox Church reigns true. No, I mean, they're starting. It's, you know. Guys. Uh, yeah, it happens. It happens. Guys, yeah, you know. telling you, uh, stop. I won't see most comments, but if I look and see it after you've been warned, I will just randomly start blocking because we have enough distractions here to work with, right? We try to deal with the topic and it is endless distraction. There are some distractions that we are willing to put up with, right? Like, right. like we, we've had we've had it to where we're talking about a topic and a Muslim will say that he's struggling with Islam and he wants and, and he wants to, to learn more about some topic. But sometimes we'll just stop and we'll say we want to deal with that, guys. We do not want we do not want to have to deal with this yeah. as a as a as a distraction yeah. here. Don't want to deal with it. Um, let, let, let me add one comment so they can understand. And by the way, Elias, my brother and the Lord Jesus Christ, sorry about that. But one thing I do want to recommend the brethren. As Christians, don't put L-M-A-O. Put L-M-B-O. We want to use the word aspiration. But mm -hmm. guys, I want you to understand, Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant, listen to this. We, we get so hung up on the differences in the canons because some 
traditions have more books. Catholics have additional books than Protestants and Orthodox more. But don't forget this. Keep this in mind. Please, Roman Catholic, Orthodox and Protestant, you understand that we at least agree on 66 of the books. We're in agreement. The Roman Catholic agrees, Orthodox agrees, and the Protestant agrees, 66 books. When it comes to the New Testament, Roman Catholic, Orthodox, and the Protestants agree 27 books of the New Testament. So try to focus on the agreements. Don't make the differences much more than they are because it almost sounds like they're worse than they actually are when we agree on 66 of the books. That is an amazing degree of unanimity because Muslim, uh, Muslims should keep this in mind. We did not have an emperor or a caliph that imposed the canon upon Christians. See, this is the miracle of Christianity, the beauty of Christianity. I want to make this clear before we dive, dive into the topic. We didn't have an emperor saying, you Christians have to accept these list of books, or these number of books. Contrary to what Muslims say, the Council of Nicaea did not give us the canon of the Bible. That's, that's a lie. The first Council of Nicaea didn't do that. <clears throat> and yet, without an emperor imposing the Bible books upon the church, and without a caliph imposing on what he thought should be the exact number of biblical books, like we have in the case of Islam and the Quran, and we'll talk about that, we Christians, though we were divided and scattered, still agree in regards to 66 of those books. That is an amazing degree of agreement and unanimity. So glory to the triune God for that. So yeah, focus on that. And guys, the, 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 the point that we're talking about here, one, we're gonna we're going to solve this issue for Muslims, showing that their Quran actually tells them what to do about uh, this disagreement that that we're that that that, that you have among uh, Catholics, Protestants, and Orthodox. Um, two, it doesn't it doesn't affect anything that refutes Islam, right? You, so, the books that Catholics, Orthodox, and Protestants all agree on completely refute and destroy Islam, right? Uh, and and third, when <laughs> the point we want to make, when Muslims say that it's a problem anyway because you guys have had these disagreements. When they say you've got a problem anyway, then we're going to point out that the early community of Muslims couldn't even agree on which chapters were supposed to go in the exactly. Quran. You had the you had uh, Ibn Masud and his followers who said there are only 111 chapters. You had Zayd ibn Thabit and his followers who said there are 114. And you had Ubay ibn Kaab and his followers who said there are 116. So wait a minute. If it's a huge problem for... Uh, various uh for, for various christians to have uh, a disagreement and to say they have hey we we uh we have different reasons for uh including or not including these books then great muslims had the same problem but it's not something that arose later it's something that was there at the very beginning so that muhammad's own companions could not agree on what was supposed to be in the quran so and, that's that's where we're going with this stuff and by the way to add to what david said you guys understand what I'm about to unleash an article, Lord Jesus willing. I'm hoping I got three articles that I'm trying to finish. Hopefully I'll be done within this week. And folks, guess what I'm doing for one of the articles? I'm actually going to demonstrate from the Deuterocanonicals. That's what the Catholics called those additional books, the Deuterocanonicals, which Protestants called Apocrypha, that you can find the Trinity even in those books. In other words, Muslims, guess what? Even if you were to accept those books, you still end up with the Trinity, because I'm going to show that in these books called the Deuterocanonicals by the Roman Catholic Church, Apocrypha by Protestants, God is still the Father, and you have references to the Son of God who will be killed for his righteousness and piety. And you guys who read the Deuterocanonicals know what I'm referring to. That's Wisdom Chapter 2. And in those books, you have the wisdom of God personified and the Word of God spoken as a divine person and the Holy Spirit identified as Creator. So I'm going to even show from these books, Muhammad still ends up being a false prophet and an antichrist. So God willing, I'll be unleashing that sooner than later. Surprise! Surprise, David. Um, two things. Uh, one, uh, on this Islam is the truth uh, objection here that we've addressed millions of times but have to do so over and over again. Christianity is a false and pagan religion. They believe in this equation. One plus one plus one equals three gods. No, we don't. 
Uh, that's what your that's how your prophet interpreted it because he had no clue what anyone was saying, which suggests that your God didn't know what we were even talking about. Um, he actually thought that the Trinity was made up of God, Jesus, and Mary, and no Christians believe that. So your God doesn't know what he's talking about. So your God is ignorant. So you believe your ignorant God is is the true God. Uh, but Sam, yes, Sam, tell me if this is true. Is Allah the only eternal thing in Islam? Yeah, and, and folks, uh, as I answer it, notice what David said yesterday, and we see the same pattern today. Huh. Yesterday, the topic was about the deity of Christ, and they brought up issues about Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Today, the topic is about the canon of the Bible, and now they bring up issues regarding the Trinity. Yeah. Oh, you know this is something demonic. When <laughs> we're talking about the deity of Christ yesterday, they don't bring up issues related to the deity of Christ of the Trinity, but they bring up issues about Muhammad. Today, when we're talking about the canon, they bring up issues about the Trinity. So, it, only a Muslim and someone demonized could do this. But now, for the Muslim who's bringing this objection, mm -hmm. we know that according to Sunni Islam, the Quran, Kalam Allah, the Word of Allah, is eternal, uncreated. So, Allah and the Quran are both eternal and uncreated. And then if we talk about what the Quran says about the Ruh, and here's my challenge to you Muslims, and maybe one day we'll do a session, Trinity in the Quran, Muslims come and refute us. I'll even open up my Skype or whatever, so you can come and try to put us in our place. You have the Ruh, the spirit in the Quran, who's never said to be Gabriel, nowhere, but is identified as a divine person originating from Allah himself, because Allah breathes him out, who appears as a man, can speak and be spoken to and creates and gives life. So let's do the math, David. Allah, the Quran, and the Spirit. Three! Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Now, and then when you add the chapters of the Quran, go ahead, David, it gets even worse. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh yeah, I, I just wanted to be clear here. So the 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 reasoning behind claiming that Allah's speech is eternal. If they want to argue that Allah's speech has to be eternal because it's not like he couldn't have just changed at some point and then his you know his speech suddenly has a beginning, that would mean that that Allah is changing. But what wouldn't that same reasoning apply to the spirit that he breathes out if it's originating from within Allah? It's not something that he created exactly. outside of himself. In fact, Allah creates by breathing out the spirit and, and, and giving life. So wouldn't the same reasoning that, that Muslims apply to the speech of Allah also apply to the spirit of Allah so that there is Allah and his eternal speech and the eternal spirit being breathed out by him? Yep. Sure. And, and hold on, hold on. The speech of Allah, his word, and the spirit are distinct from him, right? Yes. So they're distinct. No and just to prove your point, David, ask a Muslim... Did Allah become a book? They'll say, stuck for Allah. Mm -hmm. But the Quran is a book, right? And mm -hmm. ask them, did Allah enter creation? Mm -hmm. Can you touch him? They'll say, stuck for Allah. But you can touch the Quran, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And don't, <laughs> according to according to the Quran and Muhammad, don't the both the Quran, his eternal speech, and the spirit, his eternal spirit, both appear in the form of, of human beings? Yes. Don't they take on and don't they have memories and don't they speak and communicate and do all these things? Well, that's interesting. Yes. Now, just to let them give them the reference in the Quran about the spirit, because this reference about the Quran is in the Hadiths, and we have articles on it. We've done talks on it. But you will find in chapter 19, Muslim, Surah Al-Maryam, the chapter of Mary, named after the Blessed Mother of our Lord, even though it's a counterfeit Jesus. Anyway, with that said, chapter 19, read from 16 to 21, but I want you to pay attention to verse 17. It says, we sent to her... And the Arabic speakers here will confirm Ruhana, Ruhana, Ruhana. It means our Ruh, spirit. And he appeared to her as a perfect man. Ruhana. He appeared to her as a perfect man. And he was so convincing in his human appearance that according to the text, when Mary saw this man, she didn't know it was a spirit. She thought it's a man who wants to do something to her. And she goes, I seek refuge with the merciful, the compassionate, if you fear Allah. And then he has to say to her, I am only a messenger of your Lord sent to give you a pure son. Mm -hmm. That's how convincing he was in his human guise that she thought it was an actual flesh and blood human being. But the Quran says that's Allah's ruh appearing as a man, speaking 
and being spoken to, and then creating in Mary's womb the physical body, human nature of Jesus. Chapter 19, verses 16 to 21 of the Quran. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we have an eternal spirit who is a person, and we have an eternal, his eternal word, who is also a person, yes. and we have Allah, who is the eternal God, who's a person. So we have three eternal persons, and what Muslims want to say is, it's just one, it's just one. So one plus one plus one equals what? One? What, what do you guys say? We're, we're, try, we're trying to figure this out. Sam, doesn't this, seem, doesn't this seem like a bad copy of Christianity? Like Muhammad is taking so exactly. much, he's taking so much for Christianity from Christianity, they didn't realize he just took all of the foundations of the Trinity and he's, he's too dumb to realize it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, David, this is a fact admitted by Islamists and Muslims. And guys, you'll find Muslim scholars and Islamists are not necessarily Muslim, and even this early sect of Islam called the Mutazilites, Mutazili. They argued, this is their argument, the Sunni view of the Quran is no different than Christians' view of Jesus. The only difference is that the Christians say the eternal word became flesh, Whereas the Sunni Muslims say the eternal word became a book. But even, even the Mutazilites, that was an early Islamic sect that was influenced by Greek philosophical, logical thinking, that looked down upon this belief. They told the Sunnis, like Ahmed ibn Hanbal, who has a school named after in his honor, one of the four Madahib, right? They told them that in this, you're no different than the Christians. In other words, if you're going to say the Quran is the eternal word of God, it became a book, then how can you condemn Christians for saying Jesus' is the eternal word became flesh? So the Mutazilites denied the Quran is eternal and denied that it was God's word in a real sense. And the Mutazilites took it a step further, folks. Took it a step further. They said, you cannot distinguish Allah's attributes from his essence. The attributes are the essence. The essence is the attributes. Because once you posit a plurality of attributes that are not identical to the essence, then you have created a multiplicity of gods. Wow. They were more consistent than the Sunnis, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. And uh, one more comment, and then we'll jump into our topic. We have Shakir Muhammad, who says, uh, I have a question. Was it Yahweh that raised the dead at the resurrection, or was it Jesus? I don't know. You're, you're acting like it's like it's past tense the resurrection hasn't happened yet but yeah. uh yes according to according to the quran allah is the one who's going to raise the dead at the resurrection according to the old testament yahweh is the one who raises the dead and according to jesus he's the one who raises the dead at the resurrection so you got to do the math here you got to do the math here shakir um if Yahweh is the one who raises the dead at the resurrection and Jesus claims that he's the one who raises the dead at the resurrection, then the question is, who is Jesus claiming to be? And so the answer to your question is yes. Yes. Yahweh, exactly. Yahweh, Yahweh is Jesus. Right. Yeah. And let Jesus me add one Yahweh. thing so that we don't get accused by the Muslims of then making Jesus the Father. So whoever asks, Shakir, mm -hmm. I want you to pay attention. This is why we're Trinitarians. Mm -hmm. The Yahweh, the Jehovah that raises the dead. And by the way, it's not as explicit as in the New Testament, but it's implicit. So let me give you the references, folks, where you see that there's a resurrection and some passages connected directly with God abolishing death and or tying it in with God showing up. So it's clear God is that agent of the resurrection. Job 19, 25 to 27. Job 19, verses 25, 27. Isaiah 25, guys, write these down. Isaiah 25, verses 6 to 9, specifically verse 8. Isaiah 25, verses 6 to 9. Isaiah 26, verse 19. Isaiah 26, verse 19. And Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, but at 3 as well. There, it's Jehovah God. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus will resurrect the dead at the last day. And now, let me give you the references real quick. John chapter 5, verses 28 to 29, but make sure to read 25 with it. So you know that the voice of the one who raises the dead is the voice of Jesus, Son of God. John 5, 28 to 29 with 25. John 6, verses 39 to 40. 
John 6, verses 39 to 40, and verse 44, John 6, 44. But the same Bible also says, God the Father will raise the dead. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 14. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 14. And the same Bible says, the Holy Spirit will do it. The Holy Spirit will do it. The Spirit of God. Romans 8, verses 11 to 13. Specifically, verse 11. Romans 8, verses 11 and 13. So wait, the Father does it, the Son does it, the Spirit does it, but Jehovah does it. By golly, we're Trinitarians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. Uh, here's a cool comment. Brother says, uh, one plus one plus one, as much as yeah. you want. Hey, check this out. One plus one plus one, as much as you want. My wife just left Islam thanks to D. Wood videos. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Praise Jesus. Uh -huh. Y'all like, like that? You like that? Yeah, I got Y'all like that? Huh? You Muslims like that? Huh? <laughs> I, got I thought that was going to be the same argument again. I was why, about to, why, why would you get scared, Sam, just because these guys keep overwhelming you with their awesome arguments? That's what I'm saying, bro. They're just destroying my faith, slowly but surely. All right. Uh, hey. Ah, gosh. No, notice it because my goodness, we we said it. You, I said it. Then you said that I said it. Now I'm saying that you said that I said it. We talk. We we say we say we're going to take all Muslim objections to the deity of Christ. They start bringing up every other topic they can. As uh, soon as we say we're going to talk about the canon of Scripture and respond to uh, the claims of someone like Ahmed Didat, that's what that's those videos we got. That's the videos we got ready. Um, then they want to talk about everything else, right? Check this out. Riddle Factory here says, false doctrine of Trinity is excluded from modern English translations. John 5, 7 to 5, 8. Did we just talk about, didn't we just, <laughs> didn't we just exhaustively oh, discuss man. that yeah. basic belief of Catholic Church is proven wrong? Pro <laughs> what do you mean? If you're talking about the doctrine of the Trinity... Uh, and and here's the refutation, Sam. Show us where is where is word Trinity. Aha! So if the word doesn't occur, so notice, Sam, the word theology doesn't occur, doesn't occur in the Bible. Therefore, there's yeah. therefore there's no theology in the Bible. Precisely, no Christology, nothing. And by the way, <laughs> you know he's parroting arguments that he doesn't understand because doesn't it's understand not them. John five seven eight is yeah. first John. Mm -hmm. But then let's uh, let's play that game. He just said. You know, where's the Trinity in the Bible? Now, I'm going to challenge Riddle Factory. Where is the word Tawheed in the Quran? Mm -hmm. Tawheed in the Quran. And where do you find the Quran? The threefold division of Tawheed. Tawheed al rububiyah Tawheed al-Ibadah, Uluhiyah, Tawheed al-Asma wa Safat. Show me that threefold division. Show me the word Tawheed. And then here's another challenge. I want you to show me an unequivocal statement in the Quran that says the Quran is the word of Allah. In those exact words, this Quran is the word of Allah. The Quran is the word of Allah. You won't find it. You just destroyed your own religion. Thank you. Um, one more, because uh, taking this 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 uh, last question because it's at least veering in the direction of scriptures. But Omar K says, I have a question in the Gospel of Barnabas. It claims that Jesus was never crucified. Instead, Judas was. Can you explain that to me? Uh, yes, Omar. Well, the Gospel of Barnabas was written more than a thousand years after the events. It's universally recognized as a forgery. The original was either in Italian or Spanish. <laughs> written more than a thousand years afterwards. They can't get any of the details right. Whoever, who, whoever wrote it had no clue about the geography of the area he had no clue what he's talking about he has no idea about customs clearly and indisputably a forgery the only people who have ever taken it seriously are some muslim apologists who use it uh, to deceive their gullible followers so um yeah i hope yeah. that clears things and, uh, up don't forget though in the gospel of barnabas jesus says he's not the christ he not says the christ. muhammad not is. the messiah i'm uh, yep. not the messiah muhammad is uh -huh. and yet the moron who wrote it uh -huh. would is calls jesus the christ yeah but then has jesus saying he he's thinks not it's the messiah. He, he thinks it's a name right so jesus yeah. so jesus in the gospel of barnabas says that he's not the messiah but he's the christ where christ christ just means messiah right that's the greek right. term for messiah right so yeah. th this guy doesn't even know what basic words mean uh and and if you take it seriously that that jesus denied that he's the messiah well that would refute islam so mm -hmm. it's one massive mess again the only people to ever take this seriously 
are Muslims. They could go. And now, what, what, what's funny, Sam, is the same Muslims who will say, oh, well, if you go to textual criticism and if you read this book by textual critics, right, they never apply that to their own arguments. It never crosses their minds exactly. to say, well, let me see what. Let me see what actual scholars say about the, the gospel of Barnabas. And it's it's laughed. It's not even talked about. No one cares about it because it's yeah. such an obvious forgery. Muslims still use it because that's how desperate you have to be to try and find something that lines up with Islam. And when they do that, it still doesn't even line up with Islam. And, uh, the best comment so far I've seen is Alan Jay. He says, the gospel of Muhammad is, is a forgery too. It's called the Quran. Yeah. I like that one. That's pretty good. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. right. nice. I like that. All right. So now, Sam... Um, we're going to check out, um, I have a clip from Ahmed D dot. You said I could actually, uh, I could actually, um, find the, the longer version. I don't like this version, but it was, at least it was a short video I could download, but they put words all over the screen and stuff like that and, and added background music. So it's kind of annoying, but basically we're going to try and get the gist of where Muslims are getting some of the ridiculous arguments that they use and they don't see how inconsistent and hypocritical they're being and how this same reasoning, if they take it seriously, would absolutely destroy and obliterate the Quran in multiple ways. But they don't know that because they never apply they never apply their methodology to their own sources. So yeah. right now we're going to start, we're, we're, we're just going to uh, watch the beginning of uh, this Ahmed D. Dot clip. It's been edited and so on. I will find the original and then I would love to go through that because D dot makes so many mistakes. He clearly has no clue what he's talking about. But the things that he says, my goodness, if you know what's in the Muslim sources, you can basically say, here's the rule that D dot laid down. Here's why Islam is destroyed. Here's the next rule that D dot laid down. Here's how he just destroyed Islam again. Here's the third exactly. rule that D dot laid down. And he just obliterated his own prophet again. And you could just go down the list and they don't get it. But that's what we're here for because we're going to make sure they get it. And we're going to see all kinds of people leaving Islam. They have set themselves up for this, right? They've set themselves up. When you when you ground your religion on pillars of complete deception, don't get angry when people come in there and expose the deception and your and your religion just starts crumbling to the ground. Don't don't get mad. You guys did you guys did it. You guys are the ones who did this. All right, you ready to check out these clips, Sam? Come on, let's do it, bro. Oh, right. Actually, ah, darn it. I keep forgetting to do this. Um, someone sent me a message and says that there is a way. There is a way that you yes, can actually... Yes, they said it yesterday, too. They mentioned it. Ah, hang on, hang on. Bear with me, everyone. Someone, uh, let, me, let me just see if this is easy. I'm going to look up his message because I actually yeah. have it down here. I'm going to look up... Yeah, as you look at it, let me just remind people the rules here. Someone just said, I thank God I'm an ex-Catholic. Okay, guys, let me remind you. Whether you're an ex-Catholic, ex-Protestant, Protestant became Catholic, Catholic became Protestant, keep those dis discussions for some other forum, some other YouTube channel, some other live stream session. Because when you say something like that, you're going to go to Catholics to come after you and attack and distract, and you're letting Satan then use you to distract as opposed to praying that God uses what we're about to say to illuminate Muslims to see the truth of Jesus and fall in love with Jesus. Can you stop? falling for the schemes of the devil focus on the topic glorify jesus christ all right and uh yeah i'm looking i'm looking here he says turn on virtual cam but it says i have to install it so we'll have to wait till next time i don't want to start installing stuff if it's going to uh always run the risk of having to shut down when installing something new all right so we'll go ahead and check out this clip sam will be watching it on a little bit of a delay play a little bit of this and uh, see what happens. All right, here we have the great Ahmed Didat. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Fawailu lil ladina yaktubun al-kitab bi-aydihim, thumma yakulun haza min indi Allah liyashtaru bihi thaman kalila. Wawailu lhum min ma katabat aydihim. Here, I have in my hand. Uh, actually, I just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to pause it right there because uh, um, notice what he quotes, ladies and gentlemen. He quotes Surah two, verse seventy nine. Yeah, he quotes Surah two, verse seventy nine, because he wants to talk about the corruption of the Bible. Does he bother to address the fact that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority 
of the gospel that Christians have in our possession? No. Does he address the fact that Surah 2, verse 79 of the Quran, is about Muhammad's interactions with Jews? No. Does he address the fact that if you look at what the passage actually says, there is no way at all that it is talking about even the corruption of the Jewish scriptures? No. He ignores all of that and acts like it's talking about the gospel. Why? Why do they do this, right? Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone, way, someone who's been through that, these guys have to know that that is not talking about the gospel. They still represent it yeah. that way to their viewers. Why? They know their viewers don't know any better and that they're going to fall for this and that they're going to believe what they're told. And so they're just, again, I just said it. I just said it. They're founding their their religion upon pillars of deception. And then, well, then you get people like us coming in and wreaking havoc. All right, go ahead, Sam. No, just to say, by the way, that is from the Jimmy Swagger debate. Oh, awesome. Let you know. Awesome. That so I can go. It's from the Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy cool, Swagger cool, cool. Debate. So I will go to I will go to that debate. I will find the original yeah. because, Sam, my goodness, yeah. if we just. Gonna, we're going to have a field day with that. We're going to have a field day. We're going to have by a field day. You know who's moderating that debate? Who's that? You know who's the moderator? Who? Imam, Imam Siraj Wahaj. Really? Yeah, he's the moderator. Yeah. A young Imam Siraj Wahaj. He's the moderator. Oh, that's <laughs> he's interesting. The moderator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. All right, so going back to this video. Bible. This is the Roman Catholic version of the Bible. The Douay or Reims version of the Bible. This is an encyclopedia of 73 books. Seven more than the King James Version. You use certain technical terms like, like apocrypha, which the masses of Christendom do not know. What is this apocrypha? Apocrypha means doubtful, weak, not deserve to be in the book of God. As such, the Protestants threw it out as a fabrication. These seven books are thrown out from here. Now you tell me that this is the word of God. The King James... Actually, uh, I have to pause it there. I know you're on a delay, Sam, so you can uh, you can no, go so, ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and. Uh, but I wanted to I point out what he said. said. Anyway. Yeah, what what he said was what I wanted to pause it here for, uh, was he said that Catholics in the Catholic Bible have 73 books, but that Protestants threw out seven of the books. So he seems to think that that Protestants start off with a Catholic Bible of se containing 73 books, and then yeah. Protestants decide, hey, we want to throw out. We want to throw out these books. Is, it, is, that, a, is that an accurate uh, assessment of, of history? Absolutely not. This is, a, this is why this is an in-house discussion between Christians, brothers and sisters born of the Spirit who love Jesus Christ. This is a debate that's not going to be settled until the Lord comes. One of the chief reasons why Protestants do not accept the Deuterocanonicals, as Catholics call them, what Protestants call the Apocrypha, is because they're convinced and they believe that the Jews historically never viewed those books as sacred scripture. Now, obviously, you have Catholics, Orthodox who disagree, because I, I, I've studied this issue a little bit, David, because of the Muslims, actually. They forced me to study this issue way back. I know there are Catholics and Orthodox who actually believe that you pretty much had two canons functioning at the time of Christ. The longer canon, the larger canon, uh, the Septuagint of the Alexandrian Jews, and then the smaller, shorter canon, canon of what scholars say, <clears throat> Palestinian Jews. They use the term Palestinian, even though it wasn't called Palestine at the time. Now, however, the evidence from before, during, and after the time of Christ shows that you can't really argue that the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, had these additional books because, unfortunately for us, all the extant copies of the Greek version of the Old Testament were produced by Christian scribes after the time of Christ. So we don't really have any complete translation of the books of the Bible in Greek before and during the time of Christ. But again, to repeat, <clears throat> the reason why Protestants don't accept those books is because they believe and are convinced that the Jews historically never viewed them as scripture. That's why. But another caveat, let me add a final caveat. Some people already know this. Are you guys aware that the King James translators did translate the Apocrypha, the Deuterocanonicals in English, and made it part of their translation? It was included in the original King James of 1611. But they did make sure 
to notify the readers that they didn't view it as sacred scripture, but they couldn't simply ignore it because there are many Christians who were raised on the Deuterocanonicals, the Apocrypha, and it does have helpful information. It has beneficial information that benefits even those who don't believe in its inspiration. But we'll talk about that some other time. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I just want to point out, um, D. Dot, he, he talks about these disagreements, and you can take different Bibles and so on. There are always reasons for everything, right? There are always reasons for everything. He doesn't go through the reasons. He just he just explains the differences. And what what we really want to explain is, Muslims, if you took that seriously, if you took that that reasoning seriously, um, could you have reasons to it? Suppose suppose in a cave somewhere we found all of the earliest Qurans, all of the earliest editions of the Quran. Suppose that instead of Suppose that the guy who was ordered to burn them all by Uthman actually took them and hid them in the cave and we and we found them all. And we suppose we go in there and we find Ibn Masud's Quran. It has 111 chapters in it. Suppose we go and we find Ubay ibn Qab's Quran and it has 116. Could you have reasons for saying, you know what, I want to go with, with Ibn Masud on this one? Yes, of course you could. Of course you could. Of course, of course there are reasons. You say Muhammad said, if you want to learn from anyone, learn from this guy. So therefore I'm going with this Quran. Now, imagine you were sitting there looking at this, right? And so some people said, hey, I'm going to go with Ibn Masud's Quran. Some people said, hey, we're going with Ubay ibn Qab's Quran. Why would you go with Ubay ibn Qab's Quran? Ubay says he took everything directly from the mouth of Muhammad. Didn't learn it from anywhere else. He got it directly from the mouth of Muhammad. Okay, well, maybe I want to take what he says seriously. Exactly. Uh, Zayd ibn Thabit. Zayd ibn Thabit. So you, could, you could argue, well, well his, his is the Quran that, that became prominent in Islam later. And so we'll, we'll go with him. You could have arguments. You could lay out criteria for why you're going with each one of these Qurans. Now, suppose you didn't, no one explained the reasoning. Say, here's why I'm going with Ibn Masud. Here's why I'm going with Zayd Ibn Thabit. Here's why I'm going with this one. And you just said, look, look, they've got all these different Qurans. What a joke. It's so stupid. Oh my goodness. They're just, these guys are all, oh, they're, they're all deleting, they're all deleting chapters. So, so Ibn Masud, look at him. He's throwing out chapters of the Quran and Ubay, Ubay ibn Kab, he, he's, he's adding chapters to the Quran that were never seen before and so on. It would, you would look at that and you would say, man, you, you might want to actually be more accurate and go through their discussions because assuming that someone's right, assuming that someone's right here, you can actually you could actually go through the evidence and maybe come up on a, a, a true position. I don't think there is one. I think it's just, I think it's, uh, it's just a mess in Islam. Yeah. But what DDOT is doing is just, look, hey, these people are discovering more and more manuscripts and they're, they're discovering more and more things. And they actually have some disagreements about the canon. He doesn't explain the, 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 the reasoning for those and why they have these disagreements. It's just, uh, look, 7366 you see how they you see how christians got that problem we don't have that problem in islam why because we lie about it exactly right. mm -hmm. now let me just quickly again correct someone who professes to be a christian and i guess our appeal is falling on deaf ears you got this guy john scraduto saying something so silly i'm even offended to even have to address it he says yes let's get our scriptures from the people who crucify christ not john thank you for condemning the apostle paul so i think you're probably a closet muslim because what you did, you just condemned Paul, who after Jesus was mm -hmm. crucified by the instigation of the Jews and rose again and ascended and converted Paul to the truth, Paul writes this in Romans 3, verses 1 to 2, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. See, this is why you Christians don't say stuff that's going to embarrass you and discredit your witness for Jesus Christ. And don't say it in front of me, especially because I'm going to have to correct you. Romans 3, verses 1 to 2, John Scraduto Hopefully, you'll take correction and won't be stupid enough to repeat this again. Romans 3, verses 1 to 2. What advantage, then, does the Jew have? Not had, have. He's talking about now at the time of his writing. Or what profit is there in circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because the words of God were entrusted to them. You foolish Paul, how could you say there's an advantage in being an ethnic Jew because God entrusted his words to them. They crucified Christ, not... So don't ever make such a silly, stupid comment again, brother. Apparently there's a, apparently there's a person with multiple accounts uh, reposting the same question. Not sure why, but I'll go ahead and put it up. Uh, seems like a perfectly good question. Magda 
Magda says, as a Christian, what can I say to a Muslim to prove the authenticity of the Bible? Well, we've been through this uh, dozens of times, Magda, so just go through some of our old live streams. You can check out Sam's articles. You can check out my video, The Islamic Dilemma, and some of my other recent videos where we go through this. The Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah and the Gospel. It affirms, it specifically says it's affirming the scriptures that we have with us. It says it's affirming the scriptures that still existed during the time of Muhammad. We know what the scriptures are are and so if you're talking to a muslim if you're talking to a muslim you say that his book affirms our book and therefore he has no ground to reject our book unless he's going against his own god and his own prophet and then you tell him look so you have to agree that our book is the inspired preserved authoritative word of god until you leave islam now if you want to leave islam if you want to leave islam and come back as a generic theist or an agnostic or something like that, be my guest, and then we'll have another discussion on the Bible. But as of right now, your religion commands you to believe in my book, so you can't reject that without becoming one of the 1.6 billion apostates, <laughs> all the Muslims who have left Islam and, and simply not realized it yet. But we're here for them. All right, Sam, we're ready to, we're ready to okay. continue with the, uh, with the... Let me just remind our Christian brothers and sisters again. Folks, do not turn this into a sectarian debate where you try to prove that your church is superior and other churches are false or heretics. Or, yeah. Folks, please focus on the topic. The topic is what are Muslims required to believe about the Bible based on the Quran? And we're just using the Quran to prove to them what they're supposed to believe. It's irrelevant what the Quran says in reference to Christians, meaning what we're supposed to believe. But focus, guys, mm -hmm. don't be a stumbling block and use of the devil to cause Muslims to stumble. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, and uh, Albert Michael here says, David, no matter how many times you say that to Muslims, it will never register. Uh, that's not actually the case. You can say that it won't register for many Muslims, but it does register. Abdul Murray says that that's why he started reading the Bible when he was a Muslim. So that's that he he kept noticing that the that the Quran pointed to the Bible. So finally he says, "Well, I need to go to this Bible and and see what it says because the Quran keeps referring to the scriptures of the Jews and Christians as the inspired word of God." So people people do see this eventually. It's hard, but uh but they can they can get it. That's why we keep going over it, right? We know it's hard. We know that it's hard to break through uh years and years of indoctrination, but it it can happen. Uh Sam, you got a comment from Johannes here who says, uh, "Good day, yeah. brothers. Could Sam Say sure. something. Could Sam yeah. say something in Aramaic? Yes. Does he understand Aramaic? Yeah. I'm a Syrian. I speak Syriac, an offshoot of Aramaic, but I will say it. Shlam alochun, aturaya, suraya, mughibbi, ushlam alochun, melette, krisha, khalid, baba, brunat, ruchat, kacha, kha ala ha khaya, khalid, maran, ishum shikha, baruch lochun, kulochun, u khalid, maran, ishum shikha, brunat, ala ha, ichidaya, Malinan bit ruchit alaha, ruchit maria, ruchit kitcha, tamislan bit dimmu, dimmu zakaya, u malinan khubba, ka maran ishum shikha, u khayyik kalu, u metik kalu, hao khlapit maran ishum shikha, alahan u parukan, amin. All right. That was a long blessing to the triumph God for all of you in my mother tongue, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In Jesus name um, side comment here Abdul Rahman yes. said you are not following the Torah and the gospel as the Quran pleads you to do Abraham Moses Noah Jesus this Muhammad Muhammad worship God they did not worship Jesus so what, what, Thank you, Khati Tatiana. Maria Barakhlach to Khati. She understood what I was saying. This guy again, this is the same guy, and Sahi Christian, God bless you. See, the Syrians, they amended because they know what I'm saying. Now, uh, this guy again, mm -hmm. he was here in our previous sessions. The same guy who brings up the same questions. He actually again quoted chapter 2, verse 79, David. What's that? In the comments. Section. He are again quoted 279 in the comments. Section. Seriously? He's doing that? Yeah. Uh, yeah Abdul guy, Rahman, been, yeah, you need to uh, look. Yeah, he's wasting time, brother. He's wasting time. Um, look, I, I got to do it, man. I can't resist. I can't resist. All right, when you do this, Abdul Rahman, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it over and over again. 
I'm going to yeah. do it over and over again every time you pull this stunt because I can't. <laughs> yeah, I did it again. He's not. Here we go. Here we go. The shredded Quran, ladies and gentlemen. You're good. We've got the graphic of the shredded Quran. Why do we? Why do we talk about the shredded Quran? Because the Quran in Surah 15, verses 90 to 91, says and admits that it was shredded. So if you're going to quote Surah 2, verse 79 to us, then great. There is much harsher language that the Quran uses about itself. In Surah 15, verses 90 to 91, where it says that the Quran has been shredded. It's been dismembered, according to the Palmer translation. Shredded and dismembered. And as for, my goodness, my goodness, think about the reasoning here. Hallelujah. And by the way, as you go into the reasoning, yeah. Muhammad ibn Jaris, he's at the door. He says, I really like these dreams. The Holy Spirit is is taking his heart captive for Jesus. Muhammad ibn Jaris. So he's likened this David. He's coming that's to good, Jesus. That's good. Hallelujah. That's why people like Abdul Rahman, <laughs> who know absolutely nothing about their own religion and know nothing about our religion, who know nothing about the Torah, know nothing about the gospel, know nothing about the Quran, know nothing about Jesus, know nothing about Muhammad, are the ones who talk the most and try to distract, distract everyone else from actually seeing where the evidence points. What's up with this religion, man? What's up with this religion? I don't know, man. I don't know. But, you know, God is blessing us, showing us that our efforts are not in vain in Jesus Christ because we're seeing Muslims get saved and the church getting strengthened. So glory to God. Um, all right. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm Here waiting we have to more. D-Dot, baby. More Ahmed D-Dot coming, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim فويل للذين يكتبون الكتاب بأيديهم ثم يقولون هذا من عند الله ليشتروا به ثمنا قليلا وويل لهم مما كتبت أيديهم وويل لهم مما يكسبون صدق الله صدق الله من الرزين Here I have in my hand Now you tell me that this is the word of God the King James Version with his 66 books. This was first published in 1611 by order of His Majesty King James, whose name is still based today. Authorized version, authorized by who? Not God Almighty, by King James. He authorized it. Not God Almighty. Now, it goes back to the ancient manuscripts. I am told, what is ancient? It says four to six hundred years after Jesus is ancient. Now we have access to the most ancient manuscripts, most ancient. And this translation here, or version, the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, goes to the most ancient manuscripts. They date from two to three hundred years after Jesus. So closer to the source, the more authentic any document would be, closer to the source. This is common sense. If Jesus, in the time of Jesus, if this was written and he had signed it, autographed it, shh, no questions asked. This is two to three hundred years after, this is four to six hundred years after. So they published this translation, published in your own country here, as well as in Britain, Canada, all these countries, simultaneously you produce this Bible. And we are told some glowing tributes are being paid to this translation. It says here, Church of England newspaper says that the finest version which has been produced in the present century, this one, the finest version, the time. The time. All right, so uh, not right. a lot of content there, but he's about to he's about to get to the point. So he starts yeah. off starts off with Catholic. Bible, 73 books. And then he says, but you, you Christians say that the King James is the word of God. And then he starts off with the revised standard, which is based on earlier manuscripts. And he starts going, I'm just saying, because there, there's a, there's a, the, we're going through kind of long clips. So we're going to kind of pause and go through what, what he's saying real quick. So you've yeah. got the Catholic Bible, it's got 73 books, you've got the Protestant King James, and you've got uh, 66 books there, and you're saying that this is the Word of God, but then you've got the Revised Standard Version, it's based yeah. on more ancient manuscripts, and he's quoting 
what people said in the reviews at the time saying this is the best best most up-to-date translation available based on the ancient manuscripts yeah. and where he, what he's about to where he's about to go is to point out that in this in this bible it's pointed out that there were problems with the king james there were problems with the king james yeah and so this is a this is going to be the, the the big the big major wow. issue here there are problems with the King James. So let's go ahead and continue. Anything you wanted to say, Sam, before we move on? Yeah, just I want you guys, don't take my word for it to show the level of dishonesty and deception. Guys, even if you don't like the Revised Standard Version, I want to now invite you to do something for me, specifically the New Testament. I want you to go online, like BibleGateway.com. I want you to put King James and Revised Standard Version side by side. And when you read through the New Testament, go through the chapter, if you don't find that these two translations agree over 95% of the time, you can come and chew me out and say, Sam, you don't know what you're talking about. You shouldn't be doing apologetics. This is the dishonesty and the deception of this man. The impression he's giving is, and I have to make this, I want to repeat this, that if you pick up the Revised Standard Version, you're going to get a different God, a different Jesus, a different spirit, and a different message salvation is going to make you closer to Islam. Baloney, that's a lie from the pit of hell. The differences are, there are a few readings where they disagree, but the most part, the differences have to do with the translation of the Greek terms. And I'll give you one point real quickly, because he brings it up. Mm -hmm. The King James translators render a Greek word, monogenes, as only begotten. Yeah. The translators of the Revised Standard Version felt that monogenes is more accurately translated as unique or one and only. This, this is the kind of differences that you find, but either way, either if you want to say Jesus is only begotten son or the one and only son, you end up with Jesus being the unique son of God and therefore Muhammad is a false prophet. So don't let this con artist and his fancy rhetoric deceive you from the truth, but go ahead. And, and Sam, yeah, we, yeah we, haven't, uh, we, we haven't gotten to that, but notice that this is this is a di this is a translation difference, right? He's saying, yeah. ah, it says right, ah, in the King James it says only begotten, and in the Revised Standard it's it's what do they translate it as unique, something like that? That that's, yeah, that's only, only son, yeah, the only son, yeah. So and 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 why? Because the Greek term can mean those things, right? That's it. Yeah. So that's so, it. so no, no, notice if we if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to go that route, I could take two translations of the Quran, put them side by side. And with, that give two different translations of the same word. And whichever one I start with, I say, okay, so you see, he's saying this verse means this. But oh, this guy changes it. He changes it. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. He says it should be translated this way. You see how the book is changing here? This is amazing. And, and he, he, doesn't, oh, he, he doesn't explain any of this to the people who are watching, right? All the Muslims. Here, here's the problem I have, Sam. Whether it's D dot or Zucker Nike or any of these guys, when they point this stuff out, yeah. they know that the Muslim audience is thinking that we have all these like completely different Bibles that say all these different things. And some of them agree with Islam and others don't agree with Islam. And we're all just confused and we don't know. We and we go with the ones that we prefer and ignore the ones that support Islam and, and th they think that that's actually what's going on. It's complete nonsense, right? You look at I mean Muslims consider D dot to be Either their greatest apologists of all the, of all time, or at least in the top two or three. And you yeah, look is. at what he's doing, what he's about to do in these video in these video clips that we're that we're watching right here. He actually, actually does what Sam just pointed out. The Revised Standard Version tr uh, translates monogenes differently from the way the King James translators translated it, and he acts like you see now you've got now you've got these huge differences. This is amazing stuff, man. This is massive. Yeah. This is massive deception here. This is interesting. 100%. All right. UK, England says, the most accurate and close rendering of the original. Now, prepare for the shock. I said, prepare for the shock. From these 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious. They are, 
These are not my words. They are so, they are so many and so serious as to call for revision in the English translation. Call for revision in the revised it. And in the revision, the kingpin of the evangel. All right, so we can uh, we can watch that and go on, but we got to his uh, first sort of. Uh, yeah. Well, his, his second major point. So his first major point was kind of, um, you know, uh, Catholics have these uh, these seventy three here. May, matter of fact, maybe maybe we should save the rest of that because we do want to get into the, the yeah. Quran. Actually, has the answer here for us. In other words, Muslims, the Quran requires you to pick a side in in these disagreements. Uh, so maybe we want to save the rest of that. Yeah. Maybe in a future we'll we'll sort of cover his his overall argument but let's go ahead and address what he said right there and yeah. then we can get into this uh into this issue of 73 or 66 but sam right there he uh he quotes the uh the the intro to the revised standard version which is basically saying why they needed to translate yeah. it and it says ah but there were grave defects with the king james version Yes. And guys, what there were there were reasons for that. One is people learned more about the Greek language yeah. after the King James came along, right? In other words, you had centuries, centuries afterwards, and sometimes people learn a little bit more about translation so that they can try to be um, that they can try to be more accurate in translating certain uh, certain passages. And yeah. two, you had. A lot more manuscripts discovered than were available during the time of the King James. So notice how things work in Christianity. Wait a minute. We've learned a lot more about languages since then. And we have a lot more manuscripts available since then. Therefore, we need to sit down and see what the latest, uh, the latest evidence available produces. And notice, uh, Sam, as, as you pointed out, you can line up Revised Standard Version right beside King James you don't get any differences in doctrines. You exactly. you, you see, yeah. You the, the, and D dot. He's going to go through some some areas where you actually have disagreements, but you don't get any difference in theology. None of this affects any Christian doctrine. It's just it's it's silly to put this forward to Muslims and claim that this is what you mean by the Bible being corrupted, guys. And I that. David, I want to, even the part he read, mm -hmm. if you guys paid attention, it's right here on the screen, I froze it. The king, yet the King James Version has grave defects. Now notice what it means. That these defects are so many so serious as to call for revision of the English mm -hmm. translation. Yep. It's talking about the English, right? English translation, the English, because it's 1611 archaic, and also some of the choices they made was deemed to be, to be, not as accurate to the original wording by these scholars. So, but again, don't take my word for it. Don't take David's word mm -hmm. for it. Pick up the Revised Standard Version, King James, and you can do it online. Put it side by side. If they don't agree over 95% of the time, I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And the differences are having to do with how to translate the original language. Should it be unique, one and only, begotten, virgin, young maiden? That's the difference. But mm -hmm. the theology is the same. Christology is the same. <clears throat> Pneumatology, it's the same. But anyway, he has to spin it. He has to make yeah. it much more worse than it is for shock value in order to keep Muslims inoculated by his brainwashing so they don't read the Bible and take its message mm -hmm. seriously. That's what it is. Yeah, and uh, j just think again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, matter of fact, uh, let, let's just, I want to I wanna check out a couple of passages from the Hadith here to try and illustrate a, a few points, right? Yeah. Um, so this is from Sahih al-Bukhari, volume six. I believe I have the ability to share my screen. Let me get this pulled up. But we'll, we'll, look, at a, we'll look at a couple of passages here from Sahih al-Bukhari because our Muslim friends clearly view this as a problem. And if they view it as a problem, then let's just look at a couple of things. All right, so this is Sahih al-Bukhari, 4977. Narrated Zur bin Hubaysh, I asked Ubay ibn Kab, O Abu al-Mundir, your brother, Ibn Masud, said so-and-so, i.e., the the, this is referring to the two chapters at the end of the Quran, Surah 113 and Surah 114. According to Ibn Masud, those were not part of the Quran. These were not part of the Quran and do not belong in the Quran. 
So uh, he's saying Ibn Masud said that these chapters do not belong in the Quran. Ubay said, I asked Allah's messenger about them. I asked Allah's messenger about them, and he said, they have been revealed to me, and I have recited them as part of the Quran. So Ubay added, so we say, as Allah's messenger has said. Now notice, Ibn Masud admittedly said that these two, the, the final two chapters of the Quran, Surah 113, Surah 114, do not belong in the Quran. So this issue is brought to Ubay, Ibn Kab. He And they asked, Ubay, hey, what, what do you say? And Ubay says, well, you know, I, I got this direct. I got this directly from a, uh, from the messenger. I got this from Muhammad, who who recited them to me. And so Muslims will say, aha, well, there you have it. Ubay, <clears throat> Ubay had confirmation from Muhammad that the you know these are supposed to be in the Quran. Problem solved. Well, one that's that's the problem has not been solved because. Muhammad said, if you want to learn the Quran from anyone, learn it from Ibn Masud, right? Learn it from Ibn Masud. So the question is, why would Muhammad's top reciter of the Quran be wrong about what was even supposed to be in the Quran? So that's that's problem number one. <laughs> problem number two, let's scroll down to number uh, 5005 here. We scroll down just a little bit in the same volume of Bukhari, and we get... Sahih al-Bukhari, 5005, narrated Ibn Abbas. Umar said, Ubay was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran. So no, no, notice, notice the people who are involved here. This is Ibn Abbas, one of the best of all time, citing Umar, one of Muhammad's closest companions, the second rightly guided caliph, um, talking about Ubay, Ubay, who was on the list of Muhammad's four best reciters of the Quran, and he says, Ubay was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran, yet we leave some of what he recites. We leave some of what he recites. So, Ubay is quoting as part of the Quran certain things that the rest of Muslims were not quoting. And then if you asked Ubay about it, Ubay says, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's messenger and will not leave it for anything, whatever. And here you have... Here you have them trying to justify this. They say, ah, whatever a verse, revelation, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten? We bring one better than it, uh, one better or similar to it. Now, now, notice here. Notice what you have here, ladies and gentlemen. You've got Ubay saying, I'm not going to leave this stuff off as a recitation of the Quran because I got this from Muhammad himself. And they say, yeah, 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 but we're, we're saying, you know, we say it's been abrogated, so, so we're not quoting all of the stuff you quote. But think about this. Think about this. That's the same thing he said. That's the same thing Ubay said about the dispute over wh whether the last two chapters are in there, right? So, so they say, Ubay, Ibn Masud says these aren't actually supposed to be in there. He says, what are you talking about? I got it, I got it directly from Muhammad. So, so in Muslims there say, you see, Ubay says it's supposed to be in the Quran. Therefore, it's supposed to be in the Quran. And here, here they're saying, yeah, every you can't trust everything Ubay says about what's supposed to be in the Quran. And Ubay says, what are you talking about? I got this directly from Muhammad. I got this stuff directly from Muhammad. What is it? Not only his additional chapters, but his additions to passages all throughout the Quran. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, um, think about this. And, and there, by the way, there are plenty more passages we could go to. But one, Muslims don't know any of this, right? You, you, can, you can line up the Muslims here, unless they've been watching our channel for a while and watching my videos for a while, or reading Sam's articles, they don't know any of this. Their leaders do not discuss it. Here's what's amazing. You can pick up a copy. Uh, the reason I'm pointing all this out is you can pick up the Revised Standard Version. Open it up. And they start talking about the issues involved here, right? Their translations issues, their manuscript issues. Well, guess what? From the very origin of Islam, they couldn't even agree on what was supposed to be in the, in the Quran. They couldn't agree on, uh, on who was right about what's supposed to be in the Quran or who had the right reading. They had to kind of just, just do the best they could. And their solution was, we'll pick one and burn all the rest. And then everyone else has to agree or, 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 or there's going to be problems, right? That was the solution in Islam. So the solution in Islam was to cover all of this up and pretend that it's not happening. Um, 
And now, now that that has been their method for the past 14 centuries, pretend that they don't that they don't have uh, disagreements about what's supposed to be in the Quran. Uh, what's supposed to be in the Quran? Pretend that entire chapters didn't come up missing. Pretend that large passages didn't come up missing. Pretend that verses weren't eat by, eaten by a sheep. Pretend that you can't you know you, you can't line up manuscripts and spot the differences. We'll pretend that in Islam there's none of that. And we'll lie to our entire population and tell them that there is no dispute, perfect preservation right down to the letter. Then we'll look over then we'll look over at Christians and say, ah, you see this? Look, right here in their own Bibles, in the introduction to their own Bibles, they're admitting they're admitting that they have differences in their manuscripts. They're admitting that they can translate things differently. Oh my goodness, do you see how do you see what a what a sloppy religion that is? What you guys are really saying is Christians are honest. <laughs> Christians are honest. The ladies and gentlemen, the position of Christians is that anytime you have human beings copying and recopying manuscripts over centuries you're going to have issues. You're, you're going to have textual variants. It's going to happen. Right. We, we, the, just the people who are watching here, me, Sam, those of you who are here, we could all sit down. If you try and copy the Bible, we're all going to come up with different, with different editions of the Bible in the sense that we're all going to make mistakes as we're, as we're writing, 100%. right? And Muslims would look at that and say, you see, you see what a, what a, what a corrupt religion, not realizing if you, you, the same holds true with Islam. If you sit there and copy the entire Quran, you're going to make mistakes. And somehow Muslims think, nope, Allah would miraculously keep you from ever making a mistake. And their entire manuscript tradition shows that that's false. Uh, the, the sloppiness of the Islamic methodology uh, is evident, in, even in your own sources, which talk about different chapters and so on. So at the end of the day, it's Christians are honest about the evidence. That's why you can walk into any Christian bookstore and get a book on Bible variants and things like that. You can look. You can, you can look at those things. So notice, you've got Muslim apologists. They pretend that they don't have these things, so they're lying. And then they act like the variants in Christian manuscripts and so on help Islam when they don't, right? When they don't. If you actually look, if you're an actual, if you're, an, when actual scholars go through the manuscripts, there's, there's nothing there that, there's nothing there that hurts Christianity in any way. There's nothing that helps Islam in any way. And these same guys who lie to Muslims about the status of the Quran, and the history of the Quran, the same guys that lie about that also make it sound like, oh yeah, Christians have all these have all these different Bibles and so on. Anyway, I wanted that, I just wanted to point that yeah. out because that that addresses some uh, some some of the later issues. Yeah. Sam, you can add anything you want, but yeah, then we want to get to the 73, no, did, no, yeah. 73 you versus sixty six. You did everything you you needed to say mm -hmm. to show how dishonest the dot is because I don't want people to lose focus. We have to unpack this and explain the rhetoric that he was using that was based on lies and deceit. But the issue is the canon. Can a Muslim know what canon he or she is supposed to believe in on the basis of Muhammad's words? Yes. And we'll then unpack its implications for us Christians as we witness to Muslims. But we want to go to the canon. So no, that's it. You did, you know, there's not much I can add. All right. Well, uh, so, um, you see any comments you want to address before we actually uh, tackle this issue? Because, ladies and gentlemen, we want to deal with the 66 versus 73 books. So, just to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, there's no disagreement between Catholics and Protestants on the books that we both have in our Old Testament or the books that we both have in our New Testament. The disagreement comes with seven what are called deuterocanonical books. Catholics say they should be in there. They should be in there. And Protestants say, nope, these are not uh, these are not part of the inspired scripture. And what what you're saying is, Sam, um, whoever's right on that issue. Well, so we have to point out whoever's right on that issue doesn't affect deity of Christ, yeah. doesn't affect doctrine of the Trinity, doesn't affect Jesus' death by crucifixion, doesn't doesn't affect any of that stuff, doesn't affect any of these issues. We we Catholics and Protestants agree on Matthew. Catholics and Protestants agree on Mark. Luke, John, yeah, Acts, okay. Romans, and so on, right? There are these seven other books, but what you're going to show is that Muslims are supposed to actually take a side on this one. So Muslims aren't yes. so, Muslims should not regard this as a problem. Muslims are actually supposed to say, actually, we have to yeah. we have to agree with one of these groups because of what the Quran says. 
Yeah. Let me just real quickly set this uh, King James onlyist here who's embarrassing himself. Uh, Stephen, let me just say this because he won't stop repeating himself to his embarrassment and shame. It's, let me catch his name right here. I just lost him. See, they don't learn. It's sad that we have to keep rebuking and chiding Christians. His name is Stephen, and he keeps mentioning Philippians 4.13. So let me educate you, son, Stephen Matthew. This is not the form for you to preach your King James only ism. And I don't appreciate that you're doing it because that means you could give a damn about Muslims. You're more concerned about propping, uh, you know, popping up your <clears throat> your own particular version. Let me answer your silly objection. And if you bring these objections here, then you shouldn't be here because you're a nuisance and being used of the devil. You keep saying Philippians 4:13 Revised Standard Version. It says, "Him who strengthens me," whereas King James says, "Christ which strengthens me." Why take Christ out? This not only shows you don't know how to think logically because you're assuming you're assuming that it was taken out as opposed to added in. But let me explain why the difference. Let's go with that Philip, Paul wrote, <clears throat> I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And then you find in the later manuscripts it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The easy answer is this. If the original reading is him, then it only makes sense that some later scribe wants to make explicit what's or what's implicit. Who's the him? Well, we know in the context it's Christ, so let me make it explicit. But the point is, the message doesn't change because the Bible as all teaches that the Father strengthens you, the Son strengthens you, the Holy Spirit strengthens you, and neither reading is lost. It's there preserved, so we have nothing lost. So stop bringing these issues because you're a distraction of the devil, brother. But anyway, no, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest here, dude. Uh, if you're trying to push issues like this, I regard King James onlyism as one of the dumbest positions in the history of of humanity. If you want to say you like that, you like the King James best or something like that, I I, I have no problem with that. Um, I've read the the King James the King James Bible is the first Bible I, I read all the way through, yeah. um, so I don't have any yeah, problem Stephen with that. Stephen Matthew needs but to if, go. Yeah, he, if, he needs to go. He's starting troubles. Yeah, yeah he I, needs to I, go. He's yeah. just being a, he's a, being a smart ass abrasions. Yeah. Yeah, I. I uh, so, I have a, I definitely have a problem with, uh, with that. All right. Yeah. All right. So Sam, where are we going? Uh, the, let's talk about the cannons. Did you, did Harry hear the clip or we got to go to the clip? What? They heard the clip where he said, which cannon, right? They already heard that with the Ahmadi Um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah. At the beginning he was talking about, here's the, here's the Bible with 73 books and here's, uh, here's well, so the King James that. and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and and that's right, that, guys. that's the title of the live stream. So he's going to say other stuff. Okay. We can always we can always uh, chop it up into uh, into clips and okay. go through everything he says. But we definitely uh, it's already nine seventeen, so we definitely want to yeah, yeah. Uh, get to the top. Let me focus on this. I want to real quick because I was just assuming that he's going to go back and mention that. Okay, you heard what he said, right? The Dewey Rames, which is the English translation of the Latin Vulgate, by the way. For those of you who don't know, and I highly recommend you read the Dewey Rames. The Dewey Rames. It's online, it's on BibleGateway.com. Read it so you can see what the Latin Vulgate says. And you again will be shocked, not shocked, you shouldn't be shocked, of how, how much it agrees with the King James and other versions, because that's just the nature of the manuscripts, folks. They agree over 90% of the time you're gonna get the same theology. Now put that, put that aside. Which Bible should I follow? The Dewey Reign, 73, the Catholic Bible, or the Protestant 66 of the King James? Folks, for the Muslim, the Quran settles it for them. The Quran settles it for them. And again, I'm going to encourage you to go on Answering Islam blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. I have an actual article responding to responding to Ahmad Didat, this very issue. So what's the answer for the Muslim? The answer is simple. The Quran tells the Muslim, the Quran tells the Muslim, that as far as the Old Testament is concerned, as far as the Old Testament is concerned, the Old Testament was given to the Jews, Bani Israel, the ch children of Israel, the Yehud, the Jews, and it even tells the Muslims, Muslims, if you want to know anything about the sacred history of the Jews of Israel, ask them, consult them. So let me give you the verses. Let me give you the verses. Chapter 17, verse 2. We gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel. Chapter 17, verse 2. Chapter 23, verse 49. I'm just going to be reading verses for you guys. And I'm going to give you enough verses to show you. This is the repeated teaching of the Quran. Go to the Jews. Go to the Israelites if you want to know about their sacred history. If you want to know about Moses and the Old Testament. 
Chapter 23, verse 49. And we gave Moses the book for Israel's guidance. Chapter 29, verses 26 to 27. 29, verses 26 to 27. And Lot believed him and said, Lo, I'm a fugitive unto my Lord. Lo, he, only he, is the mighty, the wise. And we bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob, and we established the prophethood and scripture among his seed. Whose seed? Isaac's seed, Jacob's seed, Abraham's seed. So Muslims, your Quran is saying, you want to know what the scripture is and what prophet is all about? Go to the Israelites. And if you still don't get it, chapter 40, verses 53 to 54. Chapter 40, verses 53 to 54. We did before time, after time, give Moses the book of guidance, and we gave the book in inheritance to the children of Israel, a guide and message to men of understanding. Now, chapter 45, verse 16. Chapter 45, verse 16. Indeed, we gave the children of Israel the book, the judgment, and the prophethood, and we provided them with good things, and we preferred them above all creatures, all beings. I got to read that one more time. I hope the Muslims, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, are hearing what their scripture tells them. I could care less what the Quran says. I could care less what Muhammad says. But you should care because you say you believe this man. 45 verse 16. 45 verse 16. I got to read it one more time. Indeed, we gave the children of Israel the book, the judgment, and the prophethood. And we provided them with good things, and we preferred them above all creatures, above all beings. And then, now notice what it says when you want to know something about Israel and their history. Who do you go to? Muhammad? The Christians? No. Chapter 2, verse 211 of the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 211. Ask of the children of Israel how many a clear revelation we gave them. Wait, 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 wait. Muhammad, what did you say? Ask the children of Israel how many... A clear revelation we gave them. Ask Christians? No. Ask the children of Israel how many revelations we gave them. If you want to know about this Christian scriptures, you go to Christians. You want to know about the revelations to the Jews? Go to the Jews. And then, let me finish it. He who altereth the grace of Allah, after it has come unto him, lo, Allah's severe in punishment. And another one, chapter 17, verse 101. Chapter 17, verse 101. And verily, we gave unto Moses nine tokens, nine signs. In reality, it was ten. But put that aside. That blunder, we'll put aside. We verily gave unto Moses nine signs, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty. Do but ask the children of Israel how he came unto them. Then Pharaoh said unto him, Lo, I deem thee one bewitched, O Moses. Now, let me ask you a question, David. There's a few more references, but again, let me ask you a question. If the Quran says to Muslims, ask the children of Israel... How many a clear revelation we gave them and asked the children of Israel about Moses and his nine signs and Pharaoh's reaction. Why then would the Muslims come to the Christians to know what their scriptures are? Aren't these passages crystal clear? If they want to know about the scriptures of the Jews, the children of Israel. They are, they are to go to them, ask them, consult them because the prophet and the scripture is given to them. Am I mm -hmm. wrong? Am I missing something? No. The Quran over and over again. Even even Muhammad's supposed to go to the Jews to ask about their book. So Muslims, if if Muslims want to know about the scriptures of the Jews, they're supposed to go to the Jews and say, tell us about your scriptures. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to read these because we've read them in the previous sessions. Go back and re-listen to the previous sessions and the video he did on chapter 2, verse 79. Uh, what the Bible, the Quran says about the Bible, the scriptures in the hands of the Jews and Christians, but I'm going to give you the list. This is all going to be in my article. Go to my blog, type in Ahmadidat Canon. Ahmadidat Canon, and the article will pop up. Again, I don't need to look at us anymore, but write down, write down the following. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. 2, verses 40 to 44, and verse 47. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44, verse 47. Chapter 2, verse 89. And chapter 2, verse 91, 2, verse 89, and verse 91, chapter 2, verse 101, chapter 2, verse 121, and I got also include chapter 2, verse 97. So chapter 2, verse 97, verse 101, verse 121, chapter 2, verse 136, chapter 4, verse 47, chapter 46, verse 12 and 30, all of these state, Muhammad confirms the scriptures in the hands of the Jews. 
He says, I confirm, and my Quran confirms what you Jews have in your possession. And he says that the Quran is actually an Arabic version, confirmation, of the book of Moses. So if I take what the Quran teaches as a whole, and if I'm a Muslim, Muslim, guess what? You don't go to the Catholic, you don't go to the Protestant, you don't go to the Orthodox. And I'm not trying to offend Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox. This does not include you Christians. I'm talking to Muslims. Muslims are commanded by their Quran to go to the Jews and ask the Jews what books did God reveal to you as part of the Old Testament. And this is simply a fact, historical fact. At the time of Muhammad, the Jews accepted the 39 Old Testament books. These extra books, they didn't view as scripture. Now again, for the Catholics and the Orthodox, I'm not saying they're right. Let me just be clear. And I'm not trying to tickle your ears, and I'm not trying to be unnecessarily offensive. For the Catholics and Orthodox, I'm not saying they're right. What I'm saying is, that's what Muhammad forces Muslims to do, to consult the Jews, because Muhammad was talking to the Jews. That means Catholics and Orthodox. If these extra books are scripture, but for some reason the Jews later rejected him, that's more proof that Muhammad is a fraud because he's going to the wrong group to know what the Old Testament is. So it works in your advantage, Catholics and Orthodox. It shows, Muhammad, what more proof do we need that you're a fraud? You're going to the Jews at your time that rejected these books that the Jews before Christ viewed as Scripture. You're a fraud, and your Quran is a fraud, and your God is not the true God. In other words, no matter how you slice it and dice it, Muhammad ends up being a false prophet. But as far as the Muslims are concerned, Muslims, you shouldn't be asking Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, go to the Jews and they'll tell you these are the books. Now, if the Jews are wrong Muslims, that's more proof Muhammad is a fraud and a son of Satan. I hope that's clear, David. I don't know how much clear I can make it, but maybe you can reiterate and help to understand my point. Yeah, guys, uh, try, to, try to understand the point here. So, Sam. As far as the scriptures that are uniquely Christian, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and so on, there's no dispute between Catholics and Protestants on those books. Even Orthodox, right? yeah. Right. Yeah. So the dispute here arises with what is uh, what comes before that, right? What comes before that? The Old Testament scriptures and then the, the scriptures in between, right? That's the dispute. But those are, those are Jewish scriptures, right? Yep. Those are Jewish scriptures. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there's uh, as far as the, the the scriptures that Christians actually wrote, that followers of Jesus actually wrote, there's no dispute on those. We we agree on those. The yep. dis the disagreement here that Ahmed Didat is pointing out, ah, 73 books or 66 books, that's a disagreement about the the the, the canon of the Jews, the canon exactly. of the Jews, right? So yep. that's a disagreement about the canon of the Jews. So what Sam is pointing out is that the Quran says you want to know about the Jewish scriptures and what's in their Jewish scriptures, you go to the Jews. So the question for a Muslim, for someone like Ahmed Didat or for, for one of his followers now, the question should be, wait a minute, if Allah is commanding the Muslims during the time of Muhammad to go to the Jews because he's confirming those scriptures, the question would be, what did those Jews consider their canon scripture, their canonical scripture? And so Sam's pointing out those Jews of that time did not consider those seven books as canonical. And therefore, if, Muhammad, if Muhammad's followers were to go to them and ask them, they would have said these books, but they wouldn't, even, they wouldn't have brought up. They wouldn't have brought up those seven yes. books. So the Muslim should be saying right now, uh, a, a Muslim should be saying, oh, it doesn't make any sense for me to be bringing up this issue as if it's a problem for Christians. The Christians agree on the Christian books. The Christians agree on the explicitly Christian books. There are different Christian groups that disagree about the scriptures of the Jews, but according to the Quran, I'm supposed to go to the Jews about that, not to the Christians. Exactly. So the, 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 the disagreement among the Christians is completely irrelevant to Islam. I'm supposed to go to the Jews, and the Jews actually give an answer on this. 
And on this issue, they actually agree with, with, with the Protestants that you don't include those, those seven books as part of the canon. And what Sam is pointing out is, Catholics, you don't need to get or, you know, hurt your feelings. The, the Muslims, the, the, the Quran would either be right or wrong about that. If the Quran is, is wh whether the Quran's right or wrong, it doesn't, affect, it doesn't affect you. Assuming that he's wrong, if you want to say he's wrong about the canon, if, if you as a Catholic want to say, no, they're wrong about where you would go for the status of these seven deuterocanonical books, then great that's just further that would be further evidence from your perspective that muhammad is a, a false, false prophet. prophet yeah you as a catholic should not care at all what what muhammad says about the status of very book various books what we're pointing out is that if you're a muslim if you're a muslim you should not regard that 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 the point d dot is making as a serious problem at all because your quran gives you the answer oh they have a disagreement 66 or 73 well your quran says go with the 66 because it's 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 for the disagreement is over the scriptures of the jews we would ask the jews the jews would give us an answer and they would side with the 66 and therefore as a muslim you should not think this is a problem if you do regard it as a problem, then of course we would we would have to fall back on the fact that Muhammad's own companions couldn't even agree on which chapters are supposed to be in the Quran. We'll okay. ask and we'll have to ask you about your hypocrisy and inconsistency and why your why your scholars and your apologists lie about this and pretend these things didn't happen and why um, why your early companions of Muhammad burned all the manuscripts to cover up these differences. I mean I mean Sam, could you could you just imagine Catholics and Protestants? And one group just completely takes control, and then they gather all the they gather all the Bibles together, burn them all, and then one group just says, "This is the Bible. That's all there is to it." Yeah. And then regarding it as you see, we have no disagreements over over our scriptures. That's 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 what Muslims did, right? That's that's exactly what Muslims did, and Muslims think we're the ones with a problem because notice, guys, since we preserve our manuscripts. Since we preserve our manuscripts, and since yeah. we preserve all of these discussions, and again, you can walk into any Christian bookstore and get a discussion of this, you, as a Christian, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, you can actually sit down and say, here are the arguments of the Protestants. Here are the arguments of the Catholics. Here are the arguments of the Orthodox scholars. And here's their reasoning. Let me see who has the best case, and you can actually get to the truth. Muslims do not allow that. They don't allow you to eat. They want you to. They want you to be kept in a state of complete ignorance, so that you don't know these things are even issues. And they burn all the evidence, so that you can never even possibly go through it. Right? They don't want you to actually sit down and go. Let me. Let me check out Ubay ibn Kab's Quran. Let me check out Ibn Masud's Quran. Let me check out Zaid ibn Thabit's Quran. Let me compare all these and the reasoning for going with each one and make my decision. No, the Islamic. The Islamic solution is burn it all and pretend it never happened. And so you just see two massive, massive differences in the thinking of the two religions. One yeah. is always, hey, let's see who's got the best case here. Let's reason our way through this. Let's put all the evidence in front of us. Don't do not destroy the evidence. Let's put all the evidence out there. And guess what? As we learn more, we're, we, we're going to make revisions. As we get more manuscripts, we might have to, we might have to, we might learn more about translations and so on. This is always a possibility. In Islam, it's always burn everything and pretend there's never been any differences yeah let me add a few points so i can help now our brothers and sisters in jesus christ understand that we're not trying to isolate alienate our brothers and sisters and david and i hold the same view we believe yeah like enoch mark zero people quoted enoch and then you have even the orthodox church mark zero they have more books than the catholic church they have 76 you have 73 so don't start this mark zero you're setting yourself up for failure listen and learn and humble yourself for the glory of Jesus Christ. Let's come back to the issue. We believe there are true believers born of the Spirit in all the major branches of Christianity. So let me just make a couple of points. And you guys can confirm this if you're Catholic Orthodox. It is irrelevant what Muhammad believes about the Old Testament. What do I mean? Muhammad can believe whatever of the Old Testament. It doesn't change the facts. So let's say Muhammad is wrong for appealing to the Jews and they're understanding the canon because the Jews rejected books to spite Christians and they were wrong. Well, that's fine and dandy. What we're trying to show is that if you're going to be a Muslim and you're going to remain with Muhammad, you're going to have to accept the Jewish canon. However, mm -hmm. we know, and the Catholics and the Orthodox can confirm this, we know that there are Muslims who become Catholic. And guess what? They accept the 73 books of the Bible. There are Muslims who become Orthodox. Guess what? They accept the 76 books of the Orthodox Church. 
right? You have even Jews, and here's what's it's even more amazing. You have Jews who become Catholic. Roy Schulman is a very famous Jewish convert to the Roman Catholic Church, and he's an evangelist who invites Jews to embrace the Catholic Church. He believes in the Trinity, Jesus the Messiah, right? And Roy Schumann, as a Jew who's a Catholic, believes in the 73 books of the Bible. So he believes the Deuterocanonicals are inspired, which means he rejects the, the Jews' rejection of those books. You get my point? You have the association of Hebrew Catholics. So what am I getting at? Here's what I'm getting at. As far as Muslims are concerned, they are stuck with what the Quran says, go to the Jews. But we are not stuck with Muhammad. I could care less what Muhammad has to say. I am open to wherever the Holy Spirit will guide me, because the Holy Spirit is truth. He cannot lie and will guide me in all truth. So if the Spirit shows me these books are inspired, I have no reason to reject them. If they're not, then the Spirit will protect me. But that's what I'm trying to get at. You Catholics, you Orthodox, don't need to get upset. Now notice what Mark Cyril is doing. Uh, so Mark Cyril, when people like Tertullian quote Enoch, that means he must believe it's scripture. And since Jude cites Enoch, he must have believed it's scripture. And since we find a part of Enoch, the book of Watchers and the Dead Sea Scrolls, Mark Cyril, you just made a case. Enoch should be part of the Old Testament canon. That's why I'm saying stop while you're ahead. You're going to embarrass yourself, Mark. Stop while you're ahead, brother. Humble thyself before you get humble. But anyway, I hope those points are clear. Did everyone understand our points? Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant. You understand our point? D. Dot, Zechariah, Shabrali, they're all connivers, deceivers, right? Liars, because they should know better than to bring up the Catholic canon versus the Protestant canon, because they know their Quran says Muhammad confirmed the scriptures in the possession of the Jews, and Muhammad says it was the children of Israel. 45 or 16 that Allah entrusted with the prophethood, with the scripture and the commandment. So why are you now bringing up Catholic and Protestant differences when your prophet told you go to the Jews? Because they're liars, they're deceivers, they don't care about the truth, they don't care about what their, their own prophet said. As David Wood did in last session, Muslims are apostatizing even though they don't think they are because they're going against Muhammad and they're failing to perfectly submit to Muhammad. Thank you, Muslims, for showing that you are all unbelievers, apostates, because you don't believe Muhammad or his Quran. All right. Uh, let's take, go ahead and take a couple questions here, and uh, right. and then we'll get back to that. But we want to make sure everyone understood that. And Sam, I did want to I did want to address um, that when I'm talking about issues with the sort of canonization of the Quran. If Muslims were not arguing for perfect preservation right down to the letter, I wouldn't have a problem with the with with the preservation of the Quran, right? Uh, if, if if my reasoning would go something like this, right? Okay, Ibn Masud said that Surah One, Surah One Hundred Thirteen, and Surah One Hundred Fourteen aren't supposed to be in there. Um, Ubay ibn Kab said there are actually supposed to be two chapters in there that aren't missing. Abu Musa said that two entire chapters, not talking about those chapters that uh, that Ubay was talking about, but two entire chapters of the Quran were lost. Um, Surah 33, according to Aisha, more than a hundred verses were lost from that. Verses, uh, for later, uh, other verses were, were eaten by a sheep and so on. I would look at all of this and I would say, but you know what? Those, those differences there, they don't really affect Islamic doctrine. If, if, if all of Muhammad's guys agree on Surah 2 and Surah 3 and Surah 4, and even though they have differences within those, you can actually get pretty accurately what Muhammad supposedly re yes. re re received from Allah. So I would say, okay, guess what? If you have human beings, if you have human beings working on their copies, they're going to have disagreements like that. I would not have a problem with that, right? But but you've got the, the Muslim apologists, they lie, perfect preservation right down to the letter. So we have to point all of this stuff out, right? So the point is, we're, we're, we're consistent here, right? We, we, we believe that God reveals things. We believe that humans are imperfect and make mistakes. So we expect things. We expect there to be disagreements. We expect there to be different criteria. We expect there to be uh, variants in the manuscripts because people are copying yes. and so on. Uh, we, even we, even expect, we even expect that if you have thousands of people over the centuries who are, who are copying these things in different languages, we even expect that you will have people who say, you know what, I want to change this. They're going to change that. 
The great thing about the Christian manuscript tradition is we can spot it when someone does it. We can spot when someone tries to change something because we have all these manuscripts. If you change something in your copy, it doesn't change all the other copies, and that's why you have textual criticism, right? So basically, given our view, given our view of scripture, the disagreements and the variants make perfect sense. And none of it yes. affects none of it affects Christianity being true. None of it affects Christian doctrine. It this this all fits together. In Islam, the view that if you have a variant, if you have textual variants, then your book is false. Or if you have disagreements about what's supposed to be in the book, then, then your religion is false. Them making these claims about us and then ignoring the fact that their Quran has all of these issues, they've, they've destroyed their case for their own book as soon as the facts are on the table. Because once they say, oh, you know, 73 books or 66 books, you see this refutes your book. Or this word is translated differently in this book than it is in, in this Bible. That's, that's a huge problem. As soon as they lay these down as their rules, they've just destroyed their own book. And the reason yeah. they don't, the reason Muslims don't know it is because Muslims are kept in a state of ignorance by their leaders. So if we're looking at, at the history of the Bible or we're looking at the history of the, of the, of the Quran, we don't have a problem with manuscript differences, right? We don't have a problem with, with textual variants and so on. The, the areas we do have a problem with are Muslims deliberately burning everything. That's exactly. that's an issue. When they're deliberately deceptive with the evidence, we have a problem with that. So the, the areas where we have a problem with are when Muslims try to cover up all the evidence by burning manuscripts and things like that. We have a problem with that. And we have a problem with, with modern Muslim apologists today acting like they don't have those issues and being deceptive. Other than that, apart apart from those kinds of issues... We have, we I, I have no problem saying yeah we can we can get back to basically what the what the uh, what the uh, what the what the Quran said yeah there's some problems yeah we we yeah there are going to be some disputes but we, we can deal with that and with the Bible yeah we we know what the Bible we know what the Bible was we know what the original was we know that are there areas where you couldn't know how this word is spelled or something like this yes you do have those kinds of issues but it does it it just doesn't affect Christianity yeah. all right. David, let me just add a final thing where I don't see, I don't think Christians get it. Christians, this is what I want you to hear. What do they not get? No, here's what they don't get. It's a false comparison when we compare the Bible to the Quran. Do you know yeah. why? And I want Christians to listen. Christians, I need you to really listen to this. Pay attention. Do you know why? Here's, this is very important, and I don't see Christians bringing it up. And I'm not saying you, David. I've done about Christians who haven't really spent much time debating. The Quran comes through one man, Muhammad. Whereas the Bible is a collection of books by different authors. So it's actually an unfair comparison for the Muslims to compare the Quran to the Bible because you're not comparing the writing of one man with the writing of one man. You're comparing the transmission and writing of a list of books written by different people over a period of time in contrast to one book that came through the agency of one man. Now, why is that more damaging to the Muslims? Mm -hmm. I can understand why there would be some difference and confusion when you have a range of books by different people and not be absolutely certain whether this book was written by someone inspired or not. But why would there be confusion and division and misunderstanding and conflict regarding the context of a single book that came through one man among those who heard the man recite that book to them. So which is more damaging, David? Yeah, I mean, I mean, indisputably, right? I mean, it, it, it put it this way. It's similar with the issue of of contradictions, right? Muslims love to, to point to books of the Bible and say, ah, this guy's contradicting this guy. And so you're talking about a, a book that's written over a period of 15 centuries by 40 different authors in all kinds of different situations on three different continents answering all kinds of different questions. And Muslims are picking, picking these things out, saying, ha, this doesn't match up with, with that, when their own book contains, <laughs> contains all sorts of differences, and this is supposedly the work of one God revealed to right. one man. So it's a problem of consistency, right? If you're going to accuse us of having contradictions, all the more, all the more you need to be concerned about your own guy here. But it's the same, it's the same issue when you have scriptures being revealed over a period of 15 centuries and so on. And, uh, you know, Muslims will point out problems with this and stuff. And, yeah, you, you guys disagree about these ones. You don't disagree about these ones, but you disagree about, uh, about these ones and so on. My goodness, Sam, at the end of the day, their entire religion rests on Come one on. guy, one yeah. guy, one guy. 
We have a they can't even we, get it right. We have a cloud of witnesses. We have yeah. a cloud of witnesses confirming us. You could you could throw out almost anyone. You could throw out almost anyone. You could throw out entire books, and you still got you still got it all. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, that's why with all these books written by all these witnesses being sent out, passed around, copied, translated. The Christian message spread too far, too fast for any person to ever corrupt it. You could not do it. If you corrupted it, you would corrupt it in your area. And eventually, when people are looking at the manuscripts and so on, guess what? We know that we know that there was a pro we know there was a problem here for this particular in this particular area because of this particular guy. You can spot it in Islam. With the issue being, everything hinges on one dude, on one dude who I would say is the most obvious false prophet. In history, I cannot think of anyone who is disconfirmed as a prophet in more ways exactly. by more evidence than Muhammad. No one's even close. No one's even close to Muhammad in the in the various ways that you can prove him a false prophet. No one's even close. And everything in Islam rests on that one guy. And then their entire religion is based upon arguments that are that are based on complete nonsense, right? Like the perfect preservation of the Quran. It would take you five minutes of research to learn that your Quran has not been perfectly preserved according to your own sources, right? So it's based upon nothing but lies, which shouldn't be surprising since it's founded upon the most obvious false prophet in history. Yeah. And you can't yeah. find, if he's the most obvious false prophet in history, you can't prop his religion upon uh, up on, on truth. It's not going to work, right? So you have to prop it up on lies and then we look at the history of your book and it's man we've got all these disagreements burn it all anytime there's a disagreement just burn all the evidence destroy all the evidence cover it all up we look at the what we what we've been talking about previously with your early centuries of muslim historians weeding out information covering up stories deleting stuff from their sources because it was too embarrassing this entire religion is based on is built upon deception and what's absolutely mind-boggling is you will take your best apologists, Zakir Naik, Ahmed Dida. They're the biggest bunch of liars the world has, the, the, the world has right now, right? They're, they're, they're complete liars. They pretend, no disagreements in the Quran, perfect preservation. And then they go, oh, look, you know, this word. I mean, he seriously argued that. The word monogamous mm -hmm. is translated differently in these two translations. Therefore, you see this, it's the corruption of the book. Throw he's, seri Throw he, yeah. he's seriously, seriously claimed that. Why? Because he knows the Muslims who are sitting there are going, whoa, they've got, they've got that different translation. Whoa, they've got that disagreement about the book. We never have anything like that in Islam. Why don't you have anything like that in Islam? Because your leaders lie to you, uh, burn all your evidence, cover up the truth, and so you never even hear about people. So, Sam, this is this is a little side note. Uh, me and me and Nabil, I forget which year this was. Maybe this is uh, 2009, 2010, somewhere in there. You remember, uh, mm -hmm. you and me went to Isna the following year. So whatever year that was, remember we went to Isna because it was in Chicago. Yeah, uh, I yeah, we went. What year it was yeah. Yeah, we went to Isna. The year before that, I went to Isna with Nabil. It was, uh, I think, it was outside of DC, and uh, we saw. At the MSA, the Muslim Student Association was having their meeting. Was having their meeting, uh, the Dawa Task Force, right? So they were having the Dawa Task Force meeting, and it was going to be how to convert Christians. And so Nabil and I, we just went in there and sat, sat down in the back, and we were listening to what they were to the presentation. And the guy there was, I think he's one of the, I think he was the guy who started the Why Islam campaign, or, or one of those, one of those campaigns, Ask a Muslim campaign. He started one of those campaigns, and he's in there. And he's sitting there uh, answering questions and he's telling people how to really get to Christians. And he's saying, hey, you might want to and, and tell them that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. By the way, one of the Muslims answered you and he said, haha, the word, uh, the word uh, Tawheed is in the Quran because it says he is one and it's, 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 it's a Wahid. So Wahid and uh, so that supposedly answers your question about Tawheed. If you want to respond to that in a second, that, that's cool. But uh, we're sitting there watching and he's explaining things. Now, afterwards, Nabil walks up to the guy. Nabil walks up to the guy and he goes, hey, you were telling the Muslims in there, you were telling the Muslims in there that unlike the Bible, the Quran has been perfectly preserved. So my question is, what do you do with people like Ibn Masud and Ubay ibn Kab who didn't even agree that the Quran we have today contains, you know, the, the, the right mm -hmm. chapters? What do you, what, what do you do with that? And the guy, the guy sits there and goes, uh, I have to confess, I've never heard about any of these names 
uh, that you're bringing up. Uh, but but uh, I could give you the contact. I can give you the contact of Shabir Ali, and you can ask him about it. So notice, this is a guy who's training Muslims. He's never read his sources. He's never read his sources. He doesn't know about what the what the sources say. He doesn't know about the changes to the Quran. He doesn't even know about the names of the people who are involved in the early history of the Quran. He doesn't know about any of this. And he's the one training Muslims at ISNA for the MSA on how to go out and uh, show everyone that the Quran's been perfectly preserved. This religion is based upon nothing but but ignorance and deception. And then we actually get attacked we actually get attacked because we're honest with the evidence because because again you could go into any christian bookstore you find uh find a book on manuscript differences you can you can go into any christian bookstore find um find books on differences between you know catholics and protestants and orthodox you can, you can find that which means that you as an individual are trusted to actually sit down go through this and figure out which 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 position you think is strongest Muslims are never in that position because they are deliberately kept in a state of ignorance by their leaders. Now, if, if that was all I knew about these two religions, if that, was, if that was all I knew, that one is constantly pursuing the truth and being honest about the evidence, and one is constantly trying to conceal the evidence and keep people in a state of ignorance. If that's all I knew about these two, if, that, if that's all I knew about these two religions, I would already pick Christianity. When you combine that with everything that Christianity has going for it, you know, resurrection, miracles, and so on, and you compare that with what Islam has going for it, nothing. A uh, prophet who thought he was demon-possessed, had sex with a nine-year-old girl, repeatedly tried to commit suicide. When you actually look at that stuff, my, my goodness, Sam, what's going on here? Yeah, the real miracles that people think Islam's a miracle, but that proves that there's some spiritual activity taking place a demonization that only the holy spirit can set these muslims free from and bring them to the feet of jesus and holy spirit bring them to the feet of the lord jesus for the glory of christ in jesus name so yeah uh, pretty much that's how you respond to the muslim when it comes to the canon mm -hmm, got mm -hmm. it here guys you got the information go to the blog put in ahmadi.canon you got everything you need to silence them from using this objection ever again so by the grace of the lord jesus christ you've been now thoroughly equipped so now david that's all I got to say because we've said all we need to say. Now, if you want to take questions, super chats, you let me know. Whatever you want to do because the has been decimated by I, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I did see someone, uh, I think named Kasif, who was saying, could you answer my question? But I didn't see what the question was. So Kasif, if you want to ask your question now, we'll take a, we'll take a look at it. Uh, Sam, we did have one earlier from Islam is the Truth. He said, our, he said, our prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, didn't kill or crucified, according to the Holy Quran, someone who died on the cross. Allah saved his prophet and raised him up unto himself. You want to point out the uh, the obvious problem there while we wait for uh, Kasif, if, he, if he's still here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you, you have done a superb job. You've done a video on this that if Allah made it appear unto people that Jesus was killed, even though it wasn't Jesus... And yet we have the Gospels <clears throat> that are written by the eyewitnesses of Jesus or the followers of the eyewitnesses, which would be the very Gospels in the hands of the Christians at the time of Muhammad, which Muhammad said are the uncorrupt revelations of God and that the Christians need to judge by those Gospels, chapter 5, verses 46 to 47, the very Gospels that say Jesus died on the cross and rose again and appeared to the disciples and convinced them that it was him who died and rose again. He died for our sins. That means Allah is the one that foisted biblical Christianity upon the world. The very Christianity that the Muslims are saying is a lie from the pit of hell. So I don't get it, David. Yeah. Um, hey, the truth will set you free. You said Tawheed and the Quran. Um, yeah, guys, go ahead and uh, go ahead and make your case again. Sam earlier said, when you guys up, oh, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And we pointed out the word Tawheed is not in the Quran. And the response was, yeah, but Wahid is. Well, yeah, that's that's not the word Tawheed, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's show us where the word is. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and and so, so notice, notice the Muslim re reasoning. If the word is not in there, then the concept is not there. Right. The, the, the yeah. word Trinity, the word Trinity, the word Trinity is just a word means triunity because the Bible reveals the triunity of God. Right. Yes. So 
you you come up you 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 use a word you use a word for what is revealed in scripture right and and you guys have a problem with that well then you should have a problem with something like tawhid because the quran doesn't actually use the word right yeah yeah right. yeah and what's sad about it though unlike the trinity where the bible does teach what the word implies try three and one the quran doesn't teach tawhid and here's a standing challenge i've made this challenge to all the muslim polemicists adnan rashid right <clears throat> is it hamza mayat hamza zortzis there are two hamzas both of them ijaz ahmed shibir ali tell them sam shimon is challenging every one of you debate him does the quran teach tawhid unlike the word trinity though so the word is not there the bible teaches what the word implies try three one Three persons, one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I'll debate you on that as well. The Quran nowhere teaches the Islamic concept of Tawheed, because according to Tawheed, Allah is a singular consciousness, a singular person. I will decimate that using just the Quran. Here's my challenge. Muslims, the Quran is your book. It's not my book. That means you have an advantage over me. You can appeal to the Arabic and silence me and expose me. So here's my challenge to all of you. Adnan Rashid especially, Shabir Ali, debate me. Does the Quran teach Tawheed? And I will show you the Quran doesn't teach Tawheed. Either it teaches that Allah is a multi-personal being or there are multiple gods working together as a unit. So Wahid doesn't prove Allah is a singular consciousness. I'm calling out your bluff. I'm challenging you. Christians, take this clip. Say Sam Shamoon says, debate him on Tawheed, which is the heart of your religion. The Quran teaches it. Surely you can expose and silence him. And I guarantee you not one of them will debate me. Um, yeah, now you have, uh, I guess they're Unitarians or Jehovah's Witnesses or something saying Trinity is not a biblical teaching. Guys, just so you know, if you're, if you're advocating this, uh, and it's not in the context of us actually discussing it, uh, you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and tell that Unitarian Trinitarian, if you're man enough, come to my YouTube session, Shemunian, call me on Skype and watch how I send your idol God to the pit of hell by the true triune God. I'm calling you out too. E E W. Are you a Muslim or are oh, you some sort? Of, no, who is no, no. that? He's who? a Jehovah Witness oh, okay, who worships to Greg Stafford. I told him yesterday. E W. I told you yesterday. I'll decimate you and Greg Stafford. Set it up. Don't come here to preach your Arianism. You're a coward. Come yeah, to my guys, channel. Call me on Skype and I'll decimate you and Greg Stafford and destroy your false god by the power of the true God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, guys, uh, we, we have no problem with with Muslims advocating their positions because we're we're actually we're we're addressing them right now. But if you're sitting there trying to sidetrack, uh, if you're trying to sidetrack the discussion with Muslims to try and promote uh, your heretical views, when we're not discussing now, guys, here's what's amazing, Sam. We actually have times where we do go through this stuff, right? We have times where yes. uh, Anthony Rogers will actually debate one disguise and things like that, and yep. um, but now they they. They come in here and try to uh, try to sidetrack everything when we're having discussion with Muslims, dudes. You gotta, you guys gotta go. Um, and this guy keeps coming on your channel to try to convert people to Joe's witnesses. I seen him; was, he was there yesterday. You know, it was too late. I already, 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 already blocked them, dude. But, all right. Um, all right. So, if oh yeah, um, all right. So, uh, want to get to this question from Kasif? But Islam is the truth. You said our prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, didn't kill or crucify according to the Holy Quran. Can you think of how many problems there are with that Islam is the truth? Now think about what your religion has done to you. Think about what your religion has done to your mind that you can't see all of the problems with this. J just just going through a couple of the, the most the most egregious ones, right? You're saying Jesus wasn't killed or wasn't crucified. Someone else died on the cross. Allah saved Jesus and raised him up to himself. So according to you and your God and your prophet, Allah actually corrupted Christianity, right? Sam, Sam, yes. if, if we open up our Bible, if we open up our Bible right now, does it say Jesus died on, on the cross? Definitely. Died so, for our sins on top of that. So the Bible says that Jesus died on the cross. According to our Muslim friends, that's false. But where did we get that idea? Where did we get the idea? According to Islam, where did we get the idea that Jesus died on a cross, Muslims? We didn't get that idea from the, from the Apostle Paul. We didn't get that idea from the Council of Nicaea. Your God did that by tricking people into believing that Jesus died, right? Your God took someone else, 
made him look like Jesus, and then that other person was crucified in Jesus' place. But everyone sees with their own eyes. They see Jesus being crucified, even though it's not really Jesus. Your God just tricked and deceived everyone. Well, why does our Bible then say that Jesus has been crucified? Because that's what people saw. Why did they see that? Because of your God. So who corrupted Christianity? Your God did. Your God is the great corrupter of the gospel. Even though he says no one can change his words and that he revealed the gospel, no one can change his words, no one can change the gospel, and he commands Christians to judge by the gospel, he's the one who corrupted it, and he doesn't even realize that he corrupted it by deceiving people into believing that Jesus died. So your God, great deceiver that he is, tricked and deceived, literally billions of people into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion, right? All the Christians in the world who believe that Jesus died by crucifixion, it's because your God is a deceiver who tricks people into believing false things and he corrupted Jesus' message. So you just called your God a deceiver who actually corrupted the message of Jesus. He had Jesus born of a virgin, had Jesus lived the most miraculous life ever. Jesus is the Messiah. He even rescues Jesus, but then he corrupts the entire message. That's what you're telling us about your God. So what you're telling us is your God is a deceiver, but he doesn't even realize what he's done, so he's also stupid. He's a stupid deceiver. That's what, that's what you just told us. Exactly. Second, he's so dumb <laughs> that he then confirms the scriptures that say Jesus died by crucifixion. So not only does he trick and deceive people into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion, he then affirms as the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God and commands Christians to judge by scriptures that say that Jesus was crucified. So we are commanded, Surah 5, verse 47 of the Quran, to judge by the gospel. The gospel tells us that Jesus died by crucifixion. The Quran says Jesus didn't die by crucifixion. Therefore, according to what the Quran says, we now have to judge that the Quran is false. It's a lie. And Muhammad is a false prophet, and Allah is not the true God. That's what we have to conclude. So you're telling us that your God is deceptive and the stupidest, most ignorant being that has ever existed. That's what you're telling us with this statement. I hope that helps. All right, now we have this comment by Kasif. Uh, came back? Okay, let's yeah, see what yeah, he yeah. says. All right. So he said, uh, so apparently he asked his imam about Ubay bin Kaab. And so he says, my imam informed me that Ubay, uh, he had, he, he, it looks like he's asked, he's saying that Ubay remembered the abrogated verses, which is why it was left out. So Ubay is what? remembering the abrogated verses. That's why uh, yeah. Umar and others said that we have to leave out some of what he recites. Yeah. Now, there are a couple of problems with this. What are your thoughts, Sam? Exactly. Uh, the Hadith, if you read what the Hadith says, Obai's point is he doesn't leave out from his Quran even those abrogated verses. And this is what I want Kasif to listen to. Listen carefully, Kasif. Your Imam either doesn't know the answer or he's deceiving you. Do you know why? Because your Imam will tell you that there are still abrogated verses in the Quran, verses that have been abrogated, such as imbibing alcohol, intoxicants, even those passages that allowed Muslims to drink, <clears throat> as long as they didn't come to prayers drunk, they were not removed. So here's what I want you to ask your Imam. Listen carefully, Kasif. Ask them. Say, excuse me. Imam, why is it that verses that have been abrogated can still be found in the Quran and others were omitted? Who decided that? Muhammad didn't decide that, though so this was Ubay bin Kaab's point. Ubay bin Kaab's point is, who told you that the abrogated verses should be expunged from the text? I won't expunge anything, I will leave it all intact, and even the Muslims admit not all the verses that were abrogated were removed. So who decided? that some abrogated verses will sp still be in the text and others be removed. Muhammad didn't decide that. Muhammad's God didn't decide that. Obai said, I don't agree with it. I'm going to make sure everything, even the abrogated verses that Muhammad taught me, are in my mushaf, my copy, my codex. So again, who gave Uthman and anyone else who agreed with Uthman to decide, hey, these abrogated verses, they got to go, but this abrogated verse will stay. That's the point. You still have a problem. Mm -hmm. And your response is no solution to your problem. Yeah, so uh, so that's one of the issues. Uh, apart from that, Kasif, um, Ubay, Ubay has entire chapters of the Quran. Yep. Uh, another issue is that some of them don't really 
fit even the doctrine of abrogation as it's put forward. Uh, uh, normally, when abrogation is explained to us, it's that Allah abrogates his commands. That's why he can say one time, you know, hey, you know, just don't show up for prayer drunk. But, you know, that, that but then later, you know, there's alcohol is forbidden. These are these are commands. Uh, if you take some of the even some of the even some of the phrases that are removed, they don't have anything to do with commands. If you look at Surah 33, verse 6 of the Quran, where Allah says that Muhammad's wives are the mothers of the believers. Well, Ubay remembered the original version. The original version said, and Muhammad is their father. So that Muhammad is a father of the believers. Now notice, that's not a command. That's saying that what Muhammad's status is. And later, that gets removed. That gets removed. Ubay remembers the original. Other, uh, some other time, it gets changed and removed. So Ubay remembers the original. He's saying, nope, it says, I'm, I'm not changing it. That's the way I originally heard it from Muhammad himself. Note it. What, what are you saying? That, that Muhammad's a father for a little while, but not, not later? Is that what you're saying? Muhammad is a father of believers for a short little while, for you know a month or two months or something like that, but, but not, not regularly? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Kasif, when, yeah. when you ask an imam something like this, right? When you ask an imam, the, the, here's the issue. The, the real... The real problem is that it's just a mess. The early history of the Quran is a mess. It was such a mess that Uthman had to say, burn everything, let's start over, burn it all. If you disagree with me, we're going to have a problem. All right? So that was his solution. And when he did that, we even have from, from Ibn Masud, we have Ibn Masud saying, this Quran is a deceit. It's a deception, the, the new Quran. And he advised his followers to hide their Qurans so that, so that Uthman's people wouldn't be able to burn them because they're ordering, them, hey, bring out your Quran so I can burn them. And he's saying, no, hide them so that they don't know you're, you're concealing them, right? Um, that's the issue. And then you have the issue that they can't even agree on which chapters go into the Quran. You have the issue that Sam pointed out that who's, who, who's deciding this? Who's deciding that since this has been abrogated, we need to remove it from the text of the Quran because you still have abrogated verses that are in the Quran. So why are they leaving? So why do they have to say nope? We have to take that. We have to remove that from the Quran rather than leaving it in the Quran. Who's who's going about this? Exactly. So you have all these kinds of issues. But but Kasif, here's what happens when you go to your imam, right? First of all, your imam didn't want you to ever know that there was this issue. Your imam did not want you to ever know that there was a guy named Ubay ibn Kab who uh, had differences and disagreements with the Quran that people have today. Did not want you to know that there were any such disagreements. Once he finds out that you know about it, his goal is to give you an answer that he will act like solves the problem, right? So the answer that he gave was, well, you know, you've got, uh, he had some disagreements because he still, he still kept the abrogated verses while other people were cutting them out. And that solves the problem. You see, there's no problem here. No, my friend, there, there is a problem. One, some of the stuff that, that Ubay included, some of the stuff that Ubay included that is not in the Quran today, doesn't fit the doctrine of abrogation. It's not stuff that would be abrogated. It's not commands being taken out. Some did, so that that answer would would account for some things. But again, Ubay's got entire extra chapters. Yeah, he's got extra chapters. He's got things that have nothing to do with the doctrine of abrogation. So you're gonna have to ask the yeah. imam to to give a better answer. By the way, Dave, you know what's interesting about thirty three six? What's that? The proof that it's genuine. The passage says, and that his wives are the uh, are the mothers of believers. Mm -hmm. The Proof that and he is their father is genuine and it was omitted. And I have my suspicion why it's omitted. How could the wives of Muhammad be their mothers without him being their father? Now, now, now notice, Sam, based on the Quran and these terms can only have. Exactly. <laughs> these terms can only have a biological meaning. Um, right. We'd have to say that Muhammad's wives did have lots of daughters and sons, and that they were they were Muslims. But Sam, exactly. Sam, why do you think that is? Are, are, do you think it's because yeah. later in the same chapter, when it says he's a, he's exactly. a he's a father of none of your father men, to no one? Yeah. That's what I actually believe resulted because some Muslims figured that people would then use that to show an error in the Quran, mm -hmm. because in chapter thirty three, verse forty doesn't qualify the father doesn't say and he's not a physical father someone could say he's not even our spiritual father but hold on in 33 6 it says he is our father 
right? So what gives? So they admit that part, but they were so stupid that they left the part and his wives are their mothers. Well, how can they be their mothers if he's not their father? Hello, geniuses. You forgot that part too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See the problem? Yeah. Okay, so, so guys, the, yeah, the, the question is why the, why Surah 33 verse six was revealed saying that his wives are their mothers and he's their father. Uh, the question is, why was that taken out? Ubay kept it. Ubay kept it. Other Muslims took it out. And uh, Sam's view is that, well, later in the same chapter, Surah 33, verse 40, says that Muhammad's not the father, not not their father, right? Not a father of any of your men. And there we would understand that in a, in a straightforward biological context. Muhammad, any, any of these guys here, Muhammad's not the dad, right? And Sam's pointing out that the most likely explanation is that they, they realize someone's going to come along and say, wait, says Muhammad's not a father of anyone here. And yet he's saying he's a father. It's going to be a contradiction. They were worried, so they took it out. I was worried, so they just take it out, right? It's just like burning It's just like burning all the manuscripts. Like if you think there's going to be a problem, you just burn it all covered up, and then, and then no problem. Problem was, Ubay, Ubay remembered the original. All right. Yep. All right. Now, Sam, uh, uh, um, Islam is the truth is saying, David, can you please answer my question? Thank you. All right. Islam is the truth. I'm going to answer your what question. question. I'm going to answer your question. Okay. What's the question? Wow. Sam, you know, you, keep, you know we keep theorizing that maybe these guys are like plants that we hired? <laughs> exactly. You probably did without even me knowing to catch me by surprise. They, 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 seriously, they, they make it so easy. So, all right, here you go. Islam is the truth. Dr. David Wood, just imagine if you are God and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is your prophet. Would you allow enemies to kill him in the barbaric way on the cross? Allah saved his prophet and raised him up. All right, let's go through some of the problems here. Sam, problem number one. Sam, doesn't the Quran talk about prophets being brutally yes. killed by yes. the unbelievers over yes. and over and over yes. and over? It's all throughout the Quran. You can find it in chapter 2, verse 87, and other passages as well. So Yeah, so prophets were killed brutally. So what does that mean? Well, uh, according to Islam is the truth, uh, God would never allow that to happen. So the Quran is false. It's a book of lies, according to Islam is the truth, because God would not allow prophets to be killed in these barbaric ways, which the Quran says happened over and over and over and over and over and over again. All right, so that's one problem. Two, we have the original problems here. Uh, Islam is the truth. You're saying that God would not allow Jesus to be killed, and you're, you're basically asking me if I would allow uh, if I would allow him to be killed. Well, if I know that the salvation, <laughs> if the salvation of people rests on this, and this is my plan for salvation, of course. If 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 if, if, if I were Islamic, then no. If I were an Islamic deity, then no. But then I wouldn't have allowed all those guys to be brutally murdered and 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 killed, uh, given given your claims about Islam. So. In Christianity, he's not some random prophet who dies for no reason. He's dying to save us for from our exactly. sins, right? Voluntarily. Yeah. Voluntarily. So yeah. So that's that's uh, that's second problem. Third problem, we're going ahead and pointing out why. If I were doing that, if I decided I was going to save him, why would I then trick everyone into believing that he died in a brutal fashion, right? Why? What's the point of that? Why does your God deceive us about that? According to you, he took Jesus to heaven. Jesus is safe and sound. Jesus is safe and sound. Why does God need to trick and deceive people, right? So notice, if according to you, if they were coming to get Jesus and Allah wants to protect him, boom, Allah takes him out of there. He could even do it in front of everyone so that everyone knows, whoa, God, God protected Jesus. Oh, I guess we shouldn't have been against this prophet of Islam. But he does it. According to you, he then tricks and deceives everyone into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion in this horrible fashion. So what you're saying is, no, God would never allow to do that. But according to you, no, God made everyone think that. Why would he do that? So that's that's the third problem. Fourth, then fourth, your God accidentally starts Christianity in the process. Your God you accidentally you he accidentally starts Christianity in the process. Christianity doesn't get off the ground without belief that Jesus died on the cross. Where'd they get that view? According to your deceptive God. Your deceptive God says, I started that by tricking everybody. All right? So that's a problem. A little side note, number five. According to that view, where God tricks and deceives people like that, we can't trust our senses ever. We can never trust our senses, right? God could be tricking us about, about everything we see around us. We don't know what to believe. We don't know what to believe, according to your deceptive God, who tricks and deceives people for no reason, right? So th those, those are the first five. Then you have what I pointed out earlier. Why does your God then command us to judge by scriptures, which affirm that Jesus died by crucifixion, when 
according to you, he didn't die by crucifixion. Why is he commanding us and affirming as his word, scriptures, which say that Jesus died by crucifixion if he didn't? Um, so we can kind of, rounding them out here, let's, let's look at your comment because there's one more problem here. Dr. David Wood, just imagine if you are God and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is your prophet. Wouldn't, would you allow your enemies to kill him in the barbaric way on the cross? Allah saved his prophet and raised him up. According to you, God's not going to allow that to happen to his true prophet. What happened according to Muhammad? What happened, what happened to Muhammad according to Islam? He was poisoned by a Jewish woman. So notice, notice according to you. Allah would never allow Jews to kill Jesus in this disgraceful way. What happened to Muhammad? He was killed by a Jewish woman who poisoned him. He had spent three years in agony, and then he dies. And according to Aisha, not according to me, not according to Sam, according to Aisha, he went through more agony than she had ever seen anyone else go through. So your prophet died in a horrible, barbaric, agonizing way so look at what you're saying you're saying god would never allow that to happen to to his prophet and therefore he rescued jesus okay let's assume he rescued jesus muhammad died in a horrible disgraceful barbaric fashion screaming in agony that he could feel his aorta being severed which allah had already revealed if he's going to if muhammad were to invent a false revelation allah says he's going to sever his aorta your prophet dies total agony screaming that he feels his aorta being severed and that means according to you your prophet is a false prophet. So not so basically, Islam is the truth. You're telling us that your God is a deceiver who tricks and believes people, who tricks and deceives people into believing in false things. He corrupts the work of his own prophets, deceives even the people who follow his own prophets, because Jesus, Jesus' followers actually came to believe that he died by crucifixion because Allah did such a great job tricking and deceiving everybody. So your God tricked and deceived people, corrupted his own prophet's message, uh, ended up starting the world's largest false religion, according to Islam, all for no reason, not realizing it. And then he goes and he doesn't even know what's in their books. And he keeps pointing people to books that confirm Jesus' crucifixion. So you're telling us that he's, he's stupid, he's immoral, he's like the worst God ever, and then you're telling us that he would never allow that to happen to Jesus, but he allowed it to happen to Muhammad. So Muhammad's a false yep. prophet. Muhammad's, the, the Quran's a false book. Allah's this big deceiver and stupid person. And this is the question that you wanted me to answer? How, how do you not realize by now, maybe if we have questions... We, we need to make them a little bit trickier and we need to yeah, put them in man. such a way no, that it's not going to... Off. Yeah. You paid this guy off. I must, have, pay, I must have paid this guy off. There's no way he would, there's there's, no there's way there's he'd no make it this yeah. easy. Right? Come on, man. It's a payoff, dude. I'm, I'm disappointed in you, David. This is not you surprised me. Surprise, David. Right. This guy's got to be paid off to ask such a silly question. I just buried Muhammad. Come on. BW said, is Muhammad's death in the Quran or the Hadith? Well, his, well, I mean, obviously his death can't be in the Quran because the Quran is supposedly revelations to him, which stopped when he yeah. died. Um, it but, does say he will, he will die. In chapter 39, verse 30, it says, you, Muhammad, will die and they will die. Mm -hmm. So it says you will die. Chapter 39, verse 30. Yeah, and you have, and you have the prophecy that, uh, well, you have Allah saying that if Muhammad were to invent a false revelation, Allah would sever his aorta. But yes, then it's in the Hadith and the Sirah and so on, all the horrible stuff that happened to Muhammad and his agonizing, painful, horrible death that, right. yeah, yeah, that confirmed his that confirmed his status as a false prophet, not according, not just according to Allah and the Quran, but also according to our friend Islam is the truth, who said that God would never allow that to happen. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. I mean, that was uh, the summation of Islam. And these guys asked the wrong questions in the wrong <laughs> session, but it's actually enjoyed because you help us destroy Islam and glorify Jesus Christ. I can't, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. He says Allah saved Muhammad from poison. One of his companions died, and the poison didn't affect him. You so must have hated that comp companion, David. Yeah. Uh, first of all, he says right here, the poison didn't affect him. He lived three years and completed his mission, then he died. He said the poison didn't affect him. Does it Bull, bother you, David, what? that they make Muhammad a liar? Because show them that Muhammad said he's dying from the poison. So Muhammad was an idiot and a liar, according to them. Yeah. Can you show them that? This kills me. That's, that's, that's in Bukhari. That's in Bukhari. Right? Uh, right? Me, Muhammad said in Bukhari... And, and everywhere. This is all over your sources. Muhammad says that he feels the point. One, the poison did affect him. You're saying it didn't affect him. What His companion said that after he ate it, they could see the, the effect of it in his mouth. They could see it. 
So when he would open his mouth wide, they could look and say, whoa, that poison messed you up. So it's some sort of corrosive substance. Second, your prophet said that he's dying from the poison and he feels it severing his aorta. Matter of fact, he even said he felt it back then, right? So here's the, here's the problem you have. His companion, Bisher, his companion, Bisher, eats more of it. He turns green and drops dead. Muhammad sees, sees what's going on. He spits it out. So he survives for three years. Then he goes through horrible, horrible agony and dies. He was so messed up by the end that, again, we keep talking about this. He had a companion on each side and they would have to carry him around and pretend he's walking, even though his feet are just dangling on the ground and dragging along behind him. They're trying to, they're trying to make it like, look like Muhammad's still walking around, even though his feet are just dragging behind him because he's so messed up. It's like Weekend at Birdies, right? <laughs> All right, yeah. So poor your <laughs> your own prophet said he was dying from poison. You say it didn't affect him. It didn't affect him. It's Islam. How do you sit here and tell us Islam is the truth when yeah. every single thing you say has lies in it? Every single thing. And by the way, he's just saying basically Christians understand what he just said. Muhammad is a liar, or Muhammad was stupid and ignorant because Muhammad says that he it's it's. The poison mm -hmm. that is causing his illness, which resulted in his death. But according to him, either Muhammad lied in order to make that Jewess look bad to justify what some traditions say <clears throat> ended up being the reason for her to be killed. Or Muhammad was stupid to think that something three years earlier could have damaging effects resulting in his death. Or this man is desperate because he doesn't want to accept the obvious fact Muhammad is an antichrist, a son of Satan, who's now under the feet of Jesus. And condemn. Now, up your mind. now, guys, do, do you do you see how these these discussions go? David, you're so dumb. You believe that God would allow the Jews to kill Jesus? Ha ha ha! So dumb. Oh, okay. Well, according to your religion, a Jewish woman whose entire family had been slaughtered by Muslims took out your prophet with some poison because he was too dumb to know. If you just slaughtered a woman's entire family, do not let her cook your yeah, dinner. Dude. He was too. Sam, here again, if that's all I knew about Muhammad, if the only thing I ever knew about Muhammad, if everything else I knew about him was wonderful, right? If I didn't know about him and Aisha and him and Zainab and him and uh, Mary the cop, and if I didn't know any of that stuff, and all I knew about him was that there was a woman, and after her entire family was killed by his followers, she walks in and says, I'd love to cook you dinner, sir. And he said, Durr, okay, I like dinner. If that's all I knew about that guy, I would say this, this guy is Man, the I stupidest admit. person. You can line up. <laughs> there are over 7 billion people in the world. You can line up all 7 billion people and go one at a time and say, if you just slaughtered a person's entire family and that person says, I'd like to cook you dinner, should you accept it? 7 billion out of 7 billion would say, of course not. What are you, an idiot? And the one person in all of history who's stupid enough to say yes is the guy you're telling me I should listen to about God. I should listen to this guy tell me about my eternal destiny. The dumbest person I've ever heard of, right? Yeah. And then notice, Sam, you, you know you know from the sources, Bisher was sitting there reasoning, well, oh, gosh. This, poor guy, poor Bisher. He, he could even taste it. He's tasting, he's going, something tastes funny about this. It tastes it's like sick. there's something in it. But he reasoned, wait a minute, if my prophet, if my prophet is still eating this, it must be okay, even though it tastes like there's something wrong with this. And so he continues eating. He literally died because of his, his faith in Muhammad. And I'm willing to lay this down as a rule. Islam is the truth. If you can't trust your prophet with your dinner, why in the name oh, of common man. sense are you trusting him with your eternal destiny? Come on, you got to do better 100%. than this, man. Islam is not the truth. Islam is absolute nonsense. Poor guy, Bisher. He believed in this prophet because he was stupid to believe in him, and it resulted in him dying without Jesus Christ. So two, two things happened. He died physically because of poison, and he died without Jesus, entering into a Christless eternity. Thank you, Muhammad. You're, you'll be called into account by Jesus because you are guilty of the blood of many people by deceiving them into hell because you are a wicked antichrist and son of Satan. You deserve the judgment that's coming upon you by King Jesus, our Lord. Hey, Sam, and you have, uh, you have your buddy, Muhammad Ibn Jars, who said, The stuff I heard of early Islam really troubled me. That is why I now watch a lot of Christian channels. That's Amen. A, uh, Amen. That's He's come to Christ. Amen. But guys, Hallelujah. guys, notice how this happens, right? 
Oh, by the way, look, Fred Sanford, Fred Sanford, uh, put this right here. Uh, Fred Sanford uh, quotes Bukhari, 4428. I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. Uh, the as if here, the as if is not in the Arabic. That's added because they don't want Muhammad saying, I feel my aorta being cut from that poison. They didn't want him yeah. saying that. Dishonesty. Yeah. Right? Dishonesty. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and other, other, other hadiths where he says, yeah, he just feel, uh, he, he just says, I feel my aorta being severed, or this is the time when my aorta has been severed and things like that. Um, Bukhari actually adds the as if to try and avoid the implications here and the connection to Surah 69, 44 to 46. Yeah. And I just want to say amen to what Steffi Steff said. That Jewish lady is a her, uh, heroine, you know, heroine, heroine. heroine, not heroine. The heck? heroine. Learn to talk to Yeah, me. sorry, but uh, because I'm uh, growing up always to hear was heroine, so forgive me. No, the heck? Hero, heroine. All right, yeah, you're right, sister. You're right. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so all the stuff Muhammad went through, and he gets taken out by being so incredibly dumb. Yep, that's right. And you know, interesting, David, you understood. I mean, you, understand. you already know this, but for the people who don't know, even the Jewess was asked, that Jewish lady, why'd you do it? She goes, well, she reasoned, she goes, if you were a king, then we would get rid of you, because he was a tyrant and a dictator. He had just murdered her family. And if you're a prophet, then Allah would save you. Did you see what she just said? If you were a prophet, Allah would save you. But if you're simply a king, this tyrant, this <laughs> dictator, right, this oppressor, who's using prophethood to become a king to impose his will on others, then we'll be rid of you. And so guess what happened? The poison ended up killing him. So that means she was right. He was a fraud from the pit of hell. And Sam, you know it's, what's ironic about that? I've even seen Muslims leave out the part where Muhammad says that he actually he's dying because of this. And they say, this woman reasoned that if Muhammad is a true prophet, Allah would rescue him. And Allah did rescue him. And this proves that Islam is true. I've seen that as an argument. That's so silly. Man. And they don't, they, don't, they don't say that, no, what happened was. And, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, because Muslims always say this. Well, if he was actually poisoned, then how did he live three, three years? And you have to point out, look, it's not us saying that he died from the poison. It's Muhammad saying that he died from the poison. So if you don't think he's dead from the poison, then you're, called, you're saying Muhammad is stupid. What, what are you saying? He's stupid or is he a liar? Which one? Apart from that, I, <laughs> apart from that, I actually I'd been saying it for years, but I actually asked a doctor, right? I actually asked a doctor because because I said, look, what what I've been telling people for years is that when they say no, he couldn't have survived three years if he ingested poison. I point out, no, there are certain substances where if you consume a lot of it, you'll drop dead instantly. But if you get a little bit of it, it can damage you internally. And then you can have all sorts of medical problems later and you can have infections and so on. You can die from it years later. And he said, of course, the doctor said, and they oh, asked what her, go ahead. Don't yeah. Your point so, yeah. so yeah. So the, the idea is, I mean, you, you put it this way, you can drink a bottle of Drano. You're going to die. I'm assuming uh, you yeah. drink a little bit of Drano and it could, it could mess up the inside of your mouth. It can mess up your throat, leave scar tissue and lead to repeat infections and so on. And then you die, you die from it down the road. So, that's it's very very simple to understand the point here is that's what muhammad died from eating poison from a woman who made him dinner after his followers slaughtered her entire family and what he said was i feel my aorta being severed from that poison he said this despite the fact that his follower followers had memorized and were reciting Verses of the Quran where Allah says, if that man invents a false revelation, I will sever his aorta. And then Muhammad yep. dies. My aorta, my aorta, I feel my aorta being severed. What what an obvious false prophet. Go ahead. Folks, remember her name. You guys asked for her name. I just posted it twice. Zainab bint al Harith. A Jewish heroine. Zainab bint al Harith. I hope she came to know Jesus Christ. She's in heaven. She's in glory for what she did. Zainab bin al Harith. Alhamdul Masih. Al Masihu Akbar. Anyway, bro. And she was she was executed for that. She was executed for that. And and if it's interesting because here here I've seen I've seen Muslims, I've seen Muslims point out that she wasn't killed as a sign of, of Muhammad's great mercy. Uh, when you look at other passages and it says they killed her. 
And the reconciliation of those is Muhammad at first was saying, okay, she's, she's just upset. She failed. Don't kill her. Then Bisher actually died. And then, okay, now she's actually, now she actually killed one of us. Now she has to die. So this woman's entire family killed. And then she laid down her own life to take out Muhammad. It took three well, years. really was a warrior. Took three yeah. years of horrible agony. Muhammad died wallowing in freakish misery over what he had done and died in a way where he was basically proclaiming that he was a false prophet. I don't know if he realized it, but saying, ah, I feel my aorta being severed and all of this, according to Islam is the truth. Allah would never allow it to happen. And so it would never allow that to happen to a true prophet. And therefore, according to Islam is the truth. He's a false prophet. Yeah. By the way, I just want to, uh, some of the statements by Christians really kill me. Joseph just made what I say of one of the stupidest comments ever. He goes, Sam, I love you, but we can't condemn. We can judge actions. 100% Mo was wrong, but no one knows God's mercy. So wait, according to the Muslim sources, Joseph, Muhammad died believing he was the prophet of Allah, and he claimed Gabriel came to him, and Gabriel was going to take him to meet his highest companion, Allah, but you would make such a stupid comment to tell me we still don't know that this man died rejecting the true Jesus in his hell. It's these comments by Christians like this that upset me, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, people are, quote, are uh, citing various passages. So here, she was brought to the prophet and he was asked, shall we kill her? He said, no, I continue to yeah. see the effect of the poison on the palate of the yeah. mouth of Allah's apostle. That means it's something that damaged him internally. And that he yes. actually eventually died from. Notice here, notice here, you also see the beginning that shall we kill her? No. And you have other passages saying that she yes, was right. she was killed. Earlier, yeah. yeah. You have other passages yeah, saying that that she was killed. And yes. so apparently the the death of Bisher was actually a little more drawn out. So at first they ask, hey, should we kill her? Muhammad says no. Then when Bisher dies, then okay, now she has to be sentenced to sentenced to death. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. That's it. So the sources there do state that she was killed. So if there's a problem, it's a problem with sources. But like he said, to harmonize it is at first, no. But then when Bisher died, and then it's also possible that as the pain increased, she was eventually killed because they saw the damage she did to Muhammad. But either way, she is my hero. Did you ever know that you're my hero? But anyway, yeah. I don't want to say. Uh, Any other serious questions or Islam, the truth is going to help us destroy Islam further? Um, now we have, uh, uh, here said, uh, he gives an example. He says, polonium, if you take a small dose, it'll give you cancer because it's radioactive and larger doses, it will kill you in a few days. If you take a big dose, you just die. Um, so yeah, plenty of stuff like that. Although I doubt they had polonium. Um, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Check this out. Uh, the old one says, I know a woman who drank toilet cleaner when she was 20. She was in agony for six to seven years before she died, needed surgeries and hospitalizations. Wow, so, I mean, one, I mean, unless she was trying to commit suicide when she did that, you'd have to say someone was, was really, was really dumb, you know, unless they had mental health problems or were on drugs or something like that. But I mean, Muhammad did so deliberately, right? Like, oh, this, what a nice woman. Can you imagine this, Sam? What a nice woman. We just killed her entire family. And here she is trying to serve us dinner. What a nice woman. I bet she's going to cook up some delicious stuff for me and my followers. Let me gather all my followers around and we'll just yeah. sit here and eat this delicious genius. meal. Genius. Smart dude. Genius. Yeah, Smart genius. dude. All right. Should we uh, should we run through these super chats and then call, it, call, it, a, call it a night yeah. here? And guys, folks, please go back, re-listen to this, and make sure to read the article. You got the answer. When a Muslim says which canon, you know how to answer them and silence them. Destroy this argument. Get rid of this canard for the glory of Jesus. Leave them no excuse for attacking the gospel so that they have to confront the truth of Jesus Christ, the real Jesus. Go so, guys, ju just, just, to, just to recap, just to recap and review, when a Muslim brings up this issue, hey, you guys, uh, Catholics have 73 books in their Bible. Protestants have 70, I mean, have 66. This is a huge problem. You want to cover, hey, we don't have any disagreement on the books of the New Testament. So there's no disagreement on the gospel. So you Muslims who think we have these completely different books, you don't know what you're talking about, right? So explain to them what the what these differences actually are. 
Then you point out, as Sam has shown, that their Quran actually tells them to go to the Jews about the Jewish books. And the dispute, the dispute between uh, the Catholic Bible and the Protestant Bible is about certain Jewish texts. So Muslims are told in the Quran to go to the Jews to ask about their texts. And so Muslims actually have a way of getting an answer on that issue. And third, you want to point out, wait a minute, if this is an issue, if you think this is a problem, wait a minute, because Ibn Masud said that three chapters you have in your Quran aren't supposed to be there. Ubay ibn Kab said there are two chapters that are missing. So if you think it's a problem that there are these disagreements, you've got a problem here. And it, as opposed to the issue in Christianity, yours is from the very beginning. It's Muhammad's own companions who couldn't agree. So you point those things out and you'll be good to go. And on top of all that, make sure you know the Islamic dilemma that Allah is confirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scriptures. So if Muslims are saying that we've got a problem and ours has been corrupt, then great, Islam has just self-destructed by affirming corrupt scriptures. So point all of that out. Amen. And when they Amen. raise an objection, you actually go on offense. That's right, man. And this is for John Beavers and Barak. John Beaver, this is for you, baby, and Sabi, and also for Barak. Okay, no matter what you do. All right, now go. All right, let's go through uh, Super Chats. Nicola says, well, uh, didn't leave a message, just uh, just the uh, Super Chat there. Chris Claus said, may God bless you too, yeah, men God, and you. your families. Dear God, keep strengthening these men Hallelujah. so they can keep strengthening us in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Benjamin Handelman says, David, as a Catholic, I, appre uh, I appreciate you having Sam on for these topics and appreciate we can still be brothers in Christ despite Amen. disagreements. Amen, um, brother. Sophia Films, <laughs> Sophia Films says one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one equals Aisha. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. She's saying six, six years old. <laughs> That's <right. laughs> Georgina. That's funny. Okay, um, Colossians 117 and Talmud is Esau instead of Jesus on the cross uh i think he's probably confusing the aramaic syriac because remember talmud's written aramaic it would say isha mm -hmm. isha does not correspond to esau but probably that's where he's getting confused yeah um ash ash says just wanted to say i praise god for david and sam fighting the good fight and helping folks come to the truth of christ may you keep up the mighty work by the grace of god god bless you guys um andy says uh, let's see. Second Maccabees twelve forty one to forty six mentions yes. bury, b buying an indulgence and praying for the dead yes. for their sins that they may uh, may have not repented for. Jews to yes. this day, Jews to this day pray for their dead. Why mm -hmm. did Luther take them out? Truly. Yeah, I mean, I can answer this question. He's assuming too much from this passage. He's assuming that it was indulgence, as he's using a Catholic term. Mm -hmm. And reading that back into the text, it's Second Maccabees twelve thirty nine forty six. And here's the problem I have with the use of this because he brought it up, you brought it up, I didn't bring it up. That's true, F uh, friend. If you read the text, you'll see that the reason why the Jews were killed. The context he brought it up. The context is there were Jewish soldiers fighting with Judas Maccabees to reclaim the temple from Antiochus and his army. These Jews were slain in battle. Now they were troubled. Why were the Jews killed? when they were fighting in a just war for a just cause for the glory of God. They found under their tunics an amulet with the idols of Jamnia. In other words, they were syncretists who were worshiping God with idols, gods and goddesses, right? And they used that amulet as a quote-unquote good luck charm. According to your Catholic tradition, you brought it up, so you're putting me in a position to address this. According to your Catholic tradition, the fact that they were struck dead for idolatry, because they had images of false gods, gods that they invoked for protection, because it was an amulet seeking their protection, means they died committing a mortal sin. So if you want to impose Catholic categories into the text, they died committing a mortal sin. Well, according to your understanding, if you die committing a mortal sin, you don't go to purgatory, you go to hell. So if you believe this passage, that means you believe you can pray people out of hell and <clears throat> offer indulgences to get people out of hell, which contradicts your Catholic teaching because once in your hell, you're done with. 
It's in purgatory that people come out. So you can't have your cake in it too. Don't quote this passage. It proves too much. It proves that your understanding is wrong or you must agree. What they did was wrong. And so don't use it as a proof text, let alone its contradiction with 1 John chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. Because there, 1 John 5, 16 to 17 says, when someone commits a sin that leads to death, do not pray for such a one because they're dead. It's over with. So these people committed a sin that resulted in their death, but Judas still prayed for them and offered atonement in the temple, all of which contradicts 1 John. You can't have your cake and eat it too. But you brought it up, not me. So you put me in a position to address it. Go ahead. That's true. That's true. Um, Steven Universe says, God bless. Uh, Siri Fenberg says, God bless you for telling the truth. Uh, Zuck. 1237 says it is a problem since their book fell from the sky uh i think that was uh, based on what we were talking about earlier and the, the difference between our views of revelation albert michael in the super chat uh veronica at the well says the canon is a list of inspired books and not an inspired list of books thanks for the great live yeah. streams I guarantee you 9 out of 10, that person is a reformed Calvinist who loves R.C. Sproul because that's something I heard Sproul say often. He's now in glory with Jesus Christ. He was a great man that the Lord Jesus used mightily. I believe I believe uh, uh, Komaszewski and um, uh, uh, Ed Komaszewski and uh, Dan Wallace in their book. They bring that up. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. their book. I, I think they, they quote that as well. Yeah. Yeah. In, other, in other words, the, the canon, the 27 books of the New Testament, according, this is the claim, the 27 books of the New Testament, that, that list of those books, it's not an inspired list. It's just a list. It's just a list of, of the inspired books. Um, Liger System says, uh, the thing Muslims don't understand is the incessant, the incessant obsession of Christians to have the actual truth. This is one of the reasons to continue to push endlessly towards perfection. And there, I believe the context is Christians constantly wanting to update based on any new information that they have, right? If they if they learn, if they learn from other ancient sources or something, there's actually a better way to translate this word yeah, exactly. right here. There's yeah. a better way to translate this word. They're like, okay, we need to put out a new translation that actually gets people closer. In Islam, what's the what's the inclination? Burn everything. Just keep burning stuff, right? Um uh, Zoc 1237 said, bring one Sunni, one Shia, and also a Catholic. I recommend someone from Reason and Theology and one of you to talk about uh, preservation of Scripture. Um, it's, it's, okay. I mean, it's kind of a difficult I mean, discussion to have with Muslims because they all just say, nope, perfect preservation right down to the letter. Yeah. What about all this evidence? Yeah. Nope, we don't believe in any of it. It's all lies. Uh, Theo says, for the fight against religious uh, oppression. Yes. Mike J with the super sticker, Stephen Matthew with the super sticker. Um, Theo says, keep fighting. John Beavers says, if Muslims are more shaken when their leaders are trapped, you should do a stream on when DDOT was stumped in a debate with Josh McDowell. Oh, yeah, that was a great debate. Yeah, and he, he, puts, he, he put in parentheses, uh, I think. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm guessing he's referring to the, the when, when DDOT said, ah, oh, show me where Jesus said he was dead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and in fact, I remember it because I heard an article said, and by the way, that debate is online on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Josh McDowell, Ahmad Didat. This is what he said. It was like a, a God moment. God set up Didat to embarrass him. To embarrass him. Look what he said. Yeah, he said, there is not a single statement in the 27 books of the New Testament where Jesus said, I was dead and I, I came to life. And then Josh McDowell, his rebuttal, rebuttal period, came up. He goes, uh, did you say... Then nowhere in the 27 books of the New Testament, Jesus said, I was dead and I came to life. And then Josh McDowell, you know, this was a Holy Spirit anointed moment. He goes, Revelation 1, 17, and he meant 17, 18. Jesus said, I'm the first last. I was dead and behold, I live forevermore. And the Christians erupted. Hallelujah. Decimated the dot right there. And after afterwards, uh, D. Dot stormed off and warned Josh McDowell not to show up there anymore. And uh, of course, later many people uh, are aware that uh, D. Dot had some sort of stroke or something like that and was bedridden for I think ten years. But uh, interestingly, uh, Josh McDowell 
years later, so years after D Dot died, uh, ran into D Dot's daughter, and she went up to Josh McDowell and was just just you know being pleasant and so on, and said, "Yeah, just so you know, your, your book More Than a Carpenter was the last thing my uh, my my father asked for before he died." Yeah, and maybe, maybe he got saved. Now, in the, his case, he may have turned to Jesus Christ without them realizing he did that. But in case of Muhammad, if we go by the sources, again, the sources are tenuous. They may be false. Muhammad was saying uh, to the highest companion, meaning Allah. So he died believing he's a messenger. So I don't know. Yeah, so it uh, be pretty cool if uh, D-Dot actually, uh, if everything finally sunk in. Um, and that he finally accepted the gospel. Uh, Cheryl R. at the... Uh, with the super sticker. Marilyn Murphy says, check them and wreck them. Preach my brothers, stack the facts, and keep us all on track. She's referring to the uh, the backpack song from Islamicize Me. Uh, Valentine says, what's up, brothers? Uh, what's up, Valentine? Michael Lewis says, uh, uh, Benditionis Hermanos. Yep. That's, Hermanos? Something, that's something brothers. Hermanos means brothers, yes. Yeah, so Hermanos means brothers. Yeah. Brother? Okay, what's up, yeah. ese carnal? Yeah. You my primo, man. Uh, Rid Everest says, Sam and David, both of you and your families are in my prayers. Make the Holy Spirit lead you in wisdom and give you supernatural energy for apologetics. By and the way, then, dear, I just want to say something, just well, for well, the well. record. Uh, was I the one who mentioned indulgences or was that the Catholic? Uh, that was That was a Catholic who asked you about it. And he mentioned it in reference to what J Judas Maccabees did, right? Yeah, I thought I could, I could actually go back to the comment. You know, and, I, and I remember because yeah. Reyes Rivera can't refute me and he's getting upset as a Catholic. And he's falsely accusing me by saying, I said indulgences. No, Reyes, stop lying, friend. It's going to embarrass you. Your Catholic brother mentioned Second Maccabees and said, you see, they offered indulgences and prayed for the dead. I'm responding to him, mm -hmm. what he said. Don't misrepresent me, brother, because it's not going to bode well for you. Yeah, guy, guys, if you, I mean, we, we, we didn't come in here uh, criticizing or attacking um, anything other than Islam and Muhammad. But if you ask a question, if you ask a question and Sam answers it, don't 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 flip out on yeah. him for giving you yes, his, yeah. his thoughts on the issue. Uh, Michael M. said, I like dinner. I think he's referring to uh, me quoting Muhammad. I like dinner. <laughs> well, that's right. That's uh, it, Otis Show in the uh, Super Chat. Uh, Lucas MMV says, uh, Ephesians 5, take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. Uh, Alangirio says, Sam, your chest was bouncing. Were you poisoned? Yeah, you know, I was poisoned by uh, Coke Zero. Every time I drink Coke Zero, it does something. It makes my heart skip a beat every time we meet, because I don't know what to do. I'm in love with you. <laughs> that was a song. Yeah. Peterson Levinsky says, sometimes I feel the Hadiths are God's blessing. I know, isn't it awesome? Yeah, for us. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's absolutely huge because we, we talk about Islam being uh, founded on this on these pillars of lies. Well, for a long time, you didn't have the resources to go out and refute the lies, right? So, for instance, in the 1960s, you had people like Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, and they're going and preaching that Islam is the way to go. Well, guess what? None of these guys knew that Muhammad is described as uh, this is the whitest man in Arabia and that he bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves. None of these guys knew that. And we didn't have the sources to be able to uh, show them. I mean, we, we weren't even around. I meant, you know, Christians were not around to show Muslims back then what their sources actually say. Now, all of a sudden, years later, we have the sources. So when people start bringing up reasons to believe in Islam that are based on lies, we Christians now have the sources to actually prove those things wrong. So, yes, the Hadiths are uh, definitely a blessing. Um Elaine Griorio says, can we pray for Nabil's family, wife, daughter, parents, etc. Uh, as you close this live chat, uh, thanks guys for all you do. Love you guys. Jesus bless you. All right, we will close out with that. Marilyn Murphy says, uh, Muhammad committed many sins which led to his death. So why do Muslims still continue to say, peace be upon him? Yeah, I mean, if he dies this horrible, agonizing death... And it's, it's clear. I mean, everything is clearly in confirmation of him being a false prophet. What do you do saying peace be upon him? Hey. Well, that, that's ironic, isn't it? I yeah. mean, the why is it ironic, David? Because I want the Christians to understand. 
if Muhammad is in Jannah, paradise, mm -hmm. or he's in a state of peace, because they believe that those who die stay in their graves unless they're martyrs. If they're martyrs, they're with Allah in the body of green birds. So they're floating around in, in the bodies of green birds, right? Anyway, put that aside. If he's already in a state of peace, why are you invoking Allah to grant him peace? Does that make sense? It's like me saying, the Apostle Paul, may Christ's peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. Paul is in a state of peace. Peter is in a state of peace. The Blessed Mother of our Lord Jesus is in a state of peace. They're in perfect peace and bliss. You don't need to be asking Christ to bestow peace on it because they're not experiencing the fullness of the peace of Jesus Christ. So this makes no sense, Muslims, for you to keep saying, Allah, bestow your peace on Muhammad unless you are acknowledging Muhammad is burning in hell and needs to be saved from the torment of Allah too late because once in hell, you're not coming out. Yeah, yeah. Uh... It is it is it is a really strange thing that you've got all these Muslims, especially when you you talk about, I mean, when the Muslims, if you look at the Muslim explanations, you know the Muslim explanation, right? You you got it from Muhammad Hijab, um, with all the Muslims talking to Muhammad during their prayers, right? Muslims speak directly to Muhammad during their prayers, and the Muslim ex, I mean, the Muslim explanation, since if. If you go with the the obvious implication is that if Muslims are all talking to Muhammad, they think Muhammad hears him. Therefore, he'd have to be like what omniscient or omnipresent or something like that to be hearing all these prayers. So the Muslim response is that there are all these angels, and these angels are hearing you talk to Muhammad, and then they relay they relay your message to Muhammad. I wanted to actually do the math, right? If you've got 1.6 billion Muslims, we'll assume that like a billion of them are actually doing their daily prayers. So that would be 5 billion daily prayers. That's 5 billion trips of angels per day. That's a lot of heavenly resources dedicated to saying, you know, peace be upon Muhammad. Um, I mean, when is this guy going to have any time for his virgins if he's constantly got these angels flying at him like many 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 angels every second oh, Say, David, be upon he's you. in the grave man he's gonna have his virgins at the day of resurrection yom al -Qiyam. right now he's in his grave comfy and cozy in the grave what's wrong he's with you? not he's got all these guys angels coming at him so he's conscious so he does have his virgins what's wrong with you man okay all right. you're trying to you're trying to make sense of this okay i apologize uh pentacrustal says lies pentacrustal Lies, Muhammad died as a martyr at war, fighting the venom, the poor, enlightened Jewish lady that cooked for him. Pieces be <laughs> upon him. But he actually has a picture of a bee for be upon him. Um, and Lisa, look with the super sticker. All right, we went through the super chats. All right, all right. We had a still good crowd. We had over 1,400, glory to God, for a topic that many people don't find interesting but uh -huh. the fact that you had over 1400 that's because guys let me share some with you it is vitally important as Christians no matter what sect you belong to if you love Jesus Christ and obviously you do because that's why you're here you want to learn how to glorify Christ to Muslims one of the most important issues that you can learn as a student of the Bible as a faithful Christian and as an apologist especially if you're an apologist is the issue of the canon mm -hmm. and the transmission of the Bible whether you like it or not, if you're going to witness to Muslims, they're going to bring up the canon. They're going to bring up the accurate or the <clears throat> corruption of the Bible, its preservation. Study these issues. Learn these issues. Learn what Muhammad said about the Bible. Learn what the Quran said. See, in fact, when I debate a Muslim, folks, I don't even bring up the manuscript evidence. I don't bring up what textual critics say, that the Bible is the best attested book of antiquity. It has massive amount of manuscript tradition showing it's been preserved and that the original wordings are there and the extent manuscript tradition, nothing is lost. I don't bring it up. You know why? I don't need to. Muhammad does the job for me. Muslim, Muhammad said my Bible is uncorrupt. End of story. Do you believe him? You better take this book, study it, and believe its message. And if you do, you're going to fall in love with Jesus as the son of God and condemn Muhammad as an antichrist. You have no other option. But if I'm debating an atheist, then yes, that's a different story. But when it comes to Muslims, Muhammad made your job easier. I want this to sink in by the power of the Holy Spirit. Muhammad made the job of the Christian apologist so easy. Muhammad defended the Bible for us, for the Muslims. All we need to do is to remind them, this is what your prophet said. If my Bible's corrupt, you're saying he's a liar. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But if you agree with him, this book I hold is the uncorrupt word of God. You got to accept it. That means you got to accept the Trinity, Jesus the God-man, 
your savior who died for you, which means you still end up exposing Muhammad, rejecting Muhammad, condemning Muhammad. So thank you, Muhammad, for confirming the Bible and making my job easier to show Muslims you're a liar and the Bible is true and Jesus is the son of God who died for them, who is alive forevermore. Yeah, guys, try to try to understand the point. When we appeal to the Quran for what it teaches when we're talking to Muslims, not because we believe the Quran, we don't. It's because their religion requires them to believe certain things and they are in conflict with those things and they are not aware of it. And they're they're using arguments that totally contradict what their God says. So for, just, just, just to describe how this works, uh, to illustrate this, if an atheist says to me, Jesus didn't rise from, Jesus couldn't have risen from the dead because miracles are impossible. Well, then I would talk to the atheist and try to make a case for the existence of God and therefore for the possibility of miracles. If I were talking to a Muslim and the Muslim said, Jesus couldn't have risen from the dead because miracles are impossible. I'm not going to give some defense of God and defense of miracles. I'm going to say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Your own Quran affirms miracles. Yeah. So what are you saying? If you, if you want to leave Islam, then leave Islam. But if you're still a Muslim, you do not get to say what the atheist says. Stop saying what the atheist says, right? So everyone can understand that. What we're trying to tell people is lots of Muslim arguments that they use, they are actually not allowed to use. It's actually parallel. It would be like them saying miracles are impossible to avoid the resurrection, right? Their religion says that says that there are miracles, therefore they should not be using that argument. What we're saying is that their incessant attacks on the Bible, on our scriptures, are actually refuted by their own religion, and that we're saying that they need to be made aware of that so they can stop saying these things. If they want to leave Islam and then come back and say that the Bible's been corrupted, great, wonderful, do that. But under no circumstances are we going to allow them to say that the Bible's been corrupted when their God and their prophet and their book say, nope, could never happen. So that's the, that's the point of all this. And what we're saying is if Christians learn this, it's going to completely change the world of apologetic. Yeah. Hey, here you go, Ma Sam. Let me, before you do that, let me say, Muhammad Sheikh, you know you're a liar, and I already I got it. warned you. That's earlier. the one. That's the one. I, that's oh. the one I was going to. Oh. Is it the same oh. comment? Is it him lying? Because yeah. he might have been lying yeah. in multiple comments. But I'm pulling up this one. He says, ahead, David Wood, you don't get it. When we pray, we see, Oh Allah, give blessing to Muhammad. Don't teach yeah. me Islam. Is that the comment you're looking at? Yeah. Well, that was one of them because he said, I won't debate Muhammad Hijab. I'll bury Hijab in his niqab. I just made a challenge to him. So tell him to debate me. But you want to address that? Glory to Jesus because he's been running his mouth. Yeah. On my channel, he was behaving. This was the stalker I was telling you about. I don't mind him coming. And I pray the Holy Spirit will penetrate his heart and bring him to the feet of Jesus. Yeah, say, but say, he's going to say, falsely accuse us, but go ahead. Yeah. I'm saying on this issue, this is one where, I mean, if he has memorized the Islamic prayers, yeah, he, yeah. he has to know that he is lying here. He has to absolutely exactly. know he, that That's he's lying. That's why I'm getting upset with him. Yeah. And Muhammad Sheikh, listen to us. We're calling you out. Listen to us. In your five daily prayers, you do something called tashahud. Tashahud. And I want you to say yes so everyone can hear it. Do you not say in your tash tashahud, when you pray in Arabic, you say, As-salamu alayka, ahiyo nabi. As-salamu alayka, ahiyo nabi. Oh, who wants to translate that? that? Arab speakers. Uh, yeah. Arab speakers, okay, yeah, translate, translate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, okay, just, I, just, I just want them to confirm it. Even you, even you Muslims, even you Muslims who are honest, unlike uh, Muhammad Sheikh here, even you Muslims who, who are willing to say the truth, Tell us what that means. Yes. So let me repeat it. All you Arabic speakers, Muslims five times a day when they pray, they have to say tashahud. And part of that is, As-salamu alayka ahiyu nabi. What does that mean? What's it mean? Well, we already know what it means. They translate it for us in English. It's in the Hadith. Okay, what does it mean? Come on, guys. Ara uh, come Arab on. speakers. Arab speakers. Uh, tell us what... just translated it. Michelle El Saif. He said, peace be upon you, O prophet. Yep. S Michelle Saif, you sure you know Arabic? They're going to say you're lying. They're going to say you're lying. Did you hear what the translation was? Here, someone speaks Arabic. He goes, peace be upon you, O prophet. And Masori, uh, Mas Masori Ori just uh, confirmed it too. Okay, why did you lie to us, Muhammad Sheikh, when five times a day you speak to a dead man who is buried in Medina, God knows where you're at, and you say to a dead man, some in some distant place, who's in his grave, who's been there for over 14 years, you speak to him, 
السلام عليك أيها النبي. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. You're talking to a dead man in your prayer. Five times when you pray, in your prayer, part of your prayer, you communicate to a dead man as you're communicating to your God. And you're lying to us? And you think you're going to get away with it? Yeah, the, and, and again, that's my problem. If Muhammad Sheikh wants to say, sorry, I'm just a, a Muslim in name only, or I just became a Muslim three days ago and I don't know anything, or yeah, I memorized the prayers, but they were never translated for me, and so I never have any idea what I'm talking about. If you want to say that, that's, uh, that's fine. But if you actually know your prayers... If you actually know your prayers, yeah. So George, yeah, George here said the same thing. All the Means, Arabic, yeah, all the Arabic speakers are confirming it. You see it, right? Yeah, and they're actually putting it there in the in the Arabic. Means peace be upon you, O Prophet. And he's got the he's got the Arabic there. So, uh, do we have a response from Muhammad Sheikh? He went silent all of a sudden. You're supposed to uh, normally, Muhammad Sheikh. Uh, what again, happened? Shake again, and bake, baby. Again, shake and bake. Uh, I mean, you would expect you would expect him to say. Did he say anything? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hang on, hang on. This is hilarious. Look. <laughs> Islam is the truth responded. And Islam is the truth. Islam is the truth said. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. I am Arabic speaker. Sam, stop lying. You don't know Arabic. So, okay, so it's peace be upon you, O Prophet, and I'm a liar. Isn't okay. that exactly what you said? Yeah, I just said that. Yeah. So, But I'm lying again. So oh, you're, oh, you're oh. lying for saying the exact same thing, unless he says you're lying about saying peace be upon you. What are you saying, Islam is the truth? Are you saying that peace be upon you, O Prophet, is not the correct translation? Because if so, then we have to regard you as a liar, just like Muhammad Sheikh. Because again... If Muhammad Sheikh uh, just became a Muslim yesterday, he can tell us that he just became a Muslim yesterday and he doesn't know what he's saying. If he's been a Muslim for a while and he's been reciting this daily over and over again, and he's been saying over and over again, peace be upon you, O Prophet, and he and then he comes over here and says, no, you guys are lying. We only ask Allah and we say, oh, Allah. By the way, guys, notice, notice the difference here because this is actually important, right? If I say to God during my prayer, if I'm if 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 I'm speaking to God in my prayer and I say, God, please bless my grandma, that's one thing. I'm talking to God about my grandma. If I say, Oh grandma, I really hope things are going well for you, there I'm talking to my grandma. Now I'm not talking to God about my grandma, I'm talking directly to my grandma. When Muslims speak directly to Muhammad, peace be upon you. They're not saying, oh God, please send peace on Muhammad. Please bless Muhammad. Or as they should say, oh Allah, please pray for Muhammad. As Muhammad Hijab would say, Allah, please pray for the prophet. Not to. Yeah, they're speaking directly to Muhammad. Peace be upon you. They say this during their prayers, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, so what... What is our friend Islam the truth saying? Is he calling is he calling Sam a liar? And by the way, all the Arabic speakers here, is he calling them all liars? If so, that is absolutely despicable. By the, by the way, David, the full expression in the prayer, and I, I even brought up the hadith. I just gave the part that's relevant, but it's he goes here. This is Muhammad teaching them. Assalamu alayka ayu nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So literally it's peace be upon you, O Prophet. And the mercy of God, Allah, right? And his blessing. That's what it literally, that's what they're saying. But the relevant part is when it says, peace be upon you. It doesn't say, oh Allah, peace be upon. Guys, it's your prayers, dude. Why are you lying? Why are you lying to us? I don't get it. Now, now, now guys here, uh, you non-Muslims who are watching and you, Mus and you honest Muslims who are watching. You honest Muslims who are watching. Just think about this. We, this whole time we've been talking about what a bunch of liars your apologists are. People like Dita. They, they have to know what they're reading. They lie about it, right? Uh, we talk about what a bunch of liars the early Muslim community was. I mean, they're, they're, they're literally burning up manuscripts and stuff like that to try and cover up the evidence. Uh, Muslims all accuse 
all their early historians of being liars, and you can point to any early Muslim historian and other people are calling him liars. Uh, they, they, we know they were lying about lots of stuff, like making up miracle stories and so on. So we know that we're dealing with tons and tons of liars. And here we are today, and we ask something, we, we ask something simple. I, well, why, do you, why do you talk directly to Muhammad in your prayers? No, we don't do that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> we, we know you do it. We know yeah. you do it. We what can actually, we that? can actually, we can actually quote. No, you're, you're just don't try to teach us about our religion. You're lying. No, we're not. You are. Why would you? You can't even be honest. You don't even have the inte the slight bit of integrity to be honest about what you say in your prayers. Are you kidding me? All right. So, all right. Now Muhammad Sheikh is back. He said he was timed out. So Muhammad Sheikh, do you agree we're telling the truth? Because he said I was timed out. I guess someone timed it out by accident. Okay, do you now agree we're telling the truth? We even took extra time just for you because we want you to get saved. Yeah, we're out of here. Darkness of Islam and fall in love with Jesus Christ. Even though you get me upset by lying and then accusing me of lying, but still we want to get, you, get to see you saved by the power of the Holy Spirit. So was I speaking the truth? Was David speaking the truth, Muhammad Sheikh? We already went longer than usual, but were we telling the truth? Yeah, who was lying, us or you? It was one, it's one or the other. It's you or us. He said, my bad. I guess he means he admits we're telling the truth. Okay, he said, my bad. Guys, I think that's an admission on his part. Yes, we're telling the truth. Pray for him. He's not far from, com from coming to the truth in Jesus Christ our Lord. Good. At least you're honest to say my that bad. That is. Right. And, and, and guys, guys, I can, res I can, I can respect yeah. that if he just wasn't, th if he was thinking about something else and wasn't thinking clearly about what they actually say in their prayers, uh, actually fine with people acknowledging that they made a mistake. So ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind what he just acknowledged, uh, what he just acknowledged, uh, he acknowledged that Muslims do speak directly to Muhammad during their prayers. Right? We are told this is the religion of pure monotheism, and Muhammad actually had his followers speak directly to him in their prayers. So when you see them, now notice, this is a religion where they it's free from idolatry, from idolatry, free from paganism, and uh, anyone who's actually following the religion bows down every day. He said you're speaking the truth, David. On five Muhammad different occasions. Said David was speaking the yeah. truth. So yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. He just said it. Muhammad, he goes, David was speaking the truth. Amen. He got convicted. He said it. Guys, he said it. That's good. Glory to Jesus. And, um, I mean to cut you off, but I, had you, I wanted you to see that. Yeah, so here you have a religion where they bow down to this big cube and they travel there to walk circles around this cube and they bow down to it and they go and kiss this black stone and they speak to their dead prophet over and over again every day. But this is the religion that's free from idolatry and paganism. Ladies and gentlemen, just keep that, just keep that in mind as we, as we close out. Oh my goodness, Ultimate Daddy here says, Why do you want to debate texts? <laughs> yeah, no, I already, yeah, I already gave him my uh, Skype number. Watch what I'm going to do to him to his prophet. Don't worry about it. Like, think, think, think about this. Muslims. All day, every day. Your Bible's been corrupt. What about 73 books or 66 books? What about this? What about that? The Quran. Oh my goodness, it's so, it's a miracle. Miraculous preservation. As soon as we actually sit down and say, okay, let's look at the evidence. Uh, why you want to debate texts? Yeah. Why you guys want to debate texts? Oh, or is he saying chat messages? Which, is that what he's saying? Or is he talking yeah. about the text no, of the Bible? He's saying he wants to debate on Skype. Like, open up your Skype. Open your scared. Skype. So watch him. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. No, don't no. take care of this guy. He says, be a man. Shame on you. Very now, much. now, notice, Sam, pretty much every live stream you've been calling out Muslim apologists, Very Muslim much. apologists, to come on here and we will actually have discussions on all the central issues. We have no takers, but we got guys that we've never heard of who yeah. are insulting and nasty in a lot of their comments, because I looked at some of those other comments, yeah. uh, talking trash, and oh my goodness. All right. What happened? Something happened? No, we have Muhammad Sheikh here who says, hold up, we don't worship a rock. No, you you, you kiss it, though. You head over there and yeah, you yeah. kiss it. All right, yeah. guys. All right, we're going to close out now. I hope you guys were blessed. Guys, don't forget, learn these arguments. Take clips if you want. Go get my article. Upload it to your own website. Use it for the glory of Jesus. Pray for David and I. Pray for our families, his wife and children, my daughters. Pray the Lord Jesus will keep strengthening us. 
to be holy, to glorify him, to be healthy for the provisions, and use this. We want you to use this. We want you to start YouTube channels and websites and evangelize. The more, the better, because more of us, that means Islam will be destroyed faster, sooner than later, by the power of Jesus Christ. So Christ is risen. He's alive. He can never die, and he will come again. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, sooner than later, and keep us in love with you. Hey, uh, Muhammad Sheikh. Uh, just a quick question as we uh, as we uh, yes. as we sign out. Yes, I know we're gonna pray for Nabil's family. Quit nagging me about it. We're not we're not morons. I said we're gonna I said we're gonna close out with that. Yes. Um, Muhammad Sheikh here says, "Hold up, we don't worship a rock." Muhammad Sheikh, just imagine a situation like this. Imagine there's a religion out there. You hear about this new religion. Just imagine, you hear about this new religion, and. This religion runs around constantly bragging about being the true religion that's that's pure monotheism and pure worship of God. And it's completely free from paganism and idolatry. And you say, cool, I'd like to actually check this out. Could I, could I see how you worship? Now, imagine that you walk in and you see them all walking circles around this uh, cup and this pen, right? Suppose this cup and this pen are sitting in the middle of all of these worshipers and they're just walking circles and then they bow down and then they walk circles and then they bow down and they walk circles and they bow down and anywhere they are in the world they all make sure that they bow down to this cup and this pen and suppose you keep watching them and then you see them start walking up and and kissing the pen mm, mm, oh pen we love you oh beautiful pen mm, and they bow down and they kiss it mm, and they bow down and kiss it and then you ask them and say what in the world are you doing so, oh yeah, we're just worshiping God. Oh, oh, and they're bowing down and kissing the pen and bowing down the cup and kissing the pen. Would you think that they've got a problem there? If the heart of their worship is bowing down to this cup and kissing this pen, wouldn't you think that they have a problem there? Would you really think, oh, look at this pure monotheism, this pure worship of God? No, you wouldn't. You would say, what is this completely ridiculous pagan nonsense? They've, ta they've taken all the elements of paganism and they're just calling it pure monotheism. That's it. They're saying pure monotheism when they have everything that was pagan before. And guess what? What, what if you then looked at the pagans before this religion took over and you, you go back and you can see the pagans, the polytheists, and they're bowing down to the cup and kissing the pen and bowing to the cup and kissing the pen. And you say, wouldn't you say that these monotheists actually just took over these pagan practices and they don't realize it? Wouldn't, yeah. you, wouldn't you say that? Okay, yeah. that's what you look like to us. That's what you look like to us with your bowing to the Kaaba, kissing the stone, bowing to the Kaaba, kissing the stone. If you went anywhere else in the world, if you went to some island and you saw someone bowing down to a big cube and kissing a black stone and you saw them doing that, you would say, what is this ridiculous pagan nonsense? If you then found out that the people, when they bow down to this cube, when they're doing the whole process of bowing down, standing up, bowing down, standing up, and then they start talking to a dead man. Oh, dead man! Oh, dead man! Peace be upon you, dead man! They're speaking directly to the dead man. You would say this is the most pagan religion you have ever seen in your entire life. And that's what you look like to us, just so you know. All right. Sam, you want to... Daddy. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, I'm on the live stream. I'm going to call you right after this. I'm going to make you ultimate mommy. So keep barking, but I'm going to muzzle you. But one thing, Walter Jesus, I just told you, Walter Jesus, go to my YouTube session. I did talks on the canon. I already answered you earlier because you're asking us to do a session on the canon, 66, 73. I already did that. I have several sessions on my YouTube channel because David Wood's focus here will be to address Islamic topics. My YouTube channel is a little broader. So don't ask him to talk about issues that are not directly relevant to Islam. We already talked about the canon in respect to Islam. Go to YouTube and see. And if you want to hear other perspectives, look up other perspectives, Catholic or Orthodox. Mm -hmm. But I guess you want me to end it in prayer? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, one second, because Ultimate Daddy here, this is, now look at what he says. He's he says, Act 17 Apologetics, this is ultimate truth. I smacked you yesterday with Alfani. Now notice, he's already, wait, you've already got multiple accounts and you're having to run around with multiple accounts? Oh, this is one of those dogs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do, I, dude, I don't know who you are. Time, huh? Guys, I would encourage everyone out there to go to that live stream with Al Fadi and to watch what happened to Ultimate Truth when he started trying to argue 
for Bible corruption. He says here in his comment, is the Bible corrupt or not? Yes or no? According to our definition of corruption and anyone who with common sense, no. Okay. According to the Islamic, according to the Islamic definition of corrupt that you guys share amongst yourselves, yes, you could say the Bible has been corrupt, but then you'd be contradicting your God and your prophet who say our book hasn't been corrupt and you'd be refuting your own religion. And given the definition that you Muslims use to say that our book has been corrupt, you could say that our book's been corrupt by that definition, which we reject, but you'd also have to say that your book is corrupt according to that definition. So no matter how you look at it, the only way you can maintain your attacks on our Bible is by rejecting so what you're... So that's all he's going to yeah, do? By rejecting, yeah. So the only way you could maintain your position about our book is to reject what your God says, to reject what your prophets say, to declare the Quran a false book with a false God and a false prophet and you reject Islam completely and then say, here's my definition of what I mean by corruption. And by that standard that you use to say that the Bible's been corrupt, again, a standard we reject. But when you say that our book has been corrupt by this definition, you add even further condemnation to the Quran. And so, by the way, he's guys... He's one of these jokes. He's one of these jokes wasting Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. By the way, that's exactly what happened yesterday. That's okay. exactly what happened yesterday. And he's thumping his chest. So, look, Ultimate Daddy, you with your, your multiple accounts uh, and running around saying you smacked this person and smacked that person okay. when you're a it's joke with horrible arguments. I just don't have time for that on this channel. Notice we're completely happy to be very patient with Muslims and to keep doing this. But uh not not for you just coming here trash talking so but that's all i want to waste my breath on him of course Thank of course, course. I waste my time on him of course he'll be back with seven different accounts next time all right, <laughs> all right go ahead and pray for uh all right nabil's family and all right uh, we need we'll it. Mm -hmm. yes father we first want to say that we love you we praise you we worship you we thank you even though <clears throat> we fail in worshiping you perfectly our desire is to love you and honor you, to love and honor Jesus Christ, your son, and to love and honor your Holy Spirit. So, Father, we ask, we ask that you set us apart, save us from our flesh, crucify our flesh, and fill us with life from the Spirit, fruit from the Spirit, to delight your heart, the heart of Jesus, the heart of your Spirit, and to bring you glory and honor and praise and never to shame you, Father, because we love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we love you. And, Father, we also pray now, we pray for Michelle, your servant's widow. We know where Nabil is. We have no doubt because we know the Bible is true. We know Jesus Christ is risen. He's alive and he is faithful and he cannot lie. And Jesus said he is the way, the truth and life. And Nabil died confessing, believing and trusting in Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So though physically his body returned to the dust, Father, we believe by the eyes of faith, we know your servant, your son, is alive. He's alive in the presence of the Lord Jesus. He's alive with all the hosts of angels. He's alive with all the saints. He is worshiping at the feet of Jesus. He's worshiping with Paul, with Peter, <clears throat> with John, and he's worshiping even with the blessed mother of our Lord Jesus. We know that. We believe that because Christ is risen. And we know the one who said, because I live, you will live also. So thank you for that assurance that death is not the end of us because Christ is risen and he has overcome the grave. And so we pray for Michelle. We pray for Aya, his beautiful daughter, Father. And I also pray for those who are with us, David and his amazing wife. And I don't say it in front of him. I say it because it's true. You have blessed them with such a godly woman, Father. Bless her and honor her and fill her with your joy and your love, your peace. Bless his five soldiers. You've given him five boys, lions for the glory of Jesus. Be with them, protect them, and give them the health they need and intervene miraculously in the case of his two sons, Father. And Father, bless everyone here, all their families, their children, their spouses, their siblings, their parents, whatever needs they have, meet them, Father. Show them how real you are. Show them that you are a good God, a God whose goodness is beyond description. And in my case, Father, please bless my daughters. Bless their mother to fall in love with Jesus. And Father, help us to be holy and pure and in love with you. And Father, I also ask that you bless Michelle as she embarks on this journey. She's met a godly man that she believes it's from you. Father, please bless them. Confirm that you brought them together 
and through this marriage, may they glorify you and honor you and praise you. Because the focus of our life, the focus of our children, the focus of our marriages should be glorifying Jesus. So bless them, Father. Bless Aya, Father. And use this man. He can never replace Nabil, but use this man to be Jesus to her. So that Aya will grow up to know the legacy of her father, lacking nothing but being filled with the love of God, using this man and Michelle to show her the love of Jesus. And I pray that for my own children and David's family and the children of everyone here listening. And Father, please, please we ask you, you began a work in us. Finish it. Complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. Do not allow us, do not let me shame you, disappoint you, or blaspheme the name of Jesus. Make us more like Christ, more in love with Jesus, more fearless, more bold, more holy, more compassionate, more loving, more merciful, until Jesus comes or it's our time to go home. And I pray that Christ will come sooner than later or that my home going will be sooner than later because Abba, we ache to see Jesus. He is our life, he is our love, he is our all in all, and life means nothing without Jesus. So we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We need you and we love you. Keep us in love with Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll catch you all next time. Um, not sure what's going on tomorrow. I should have a video coming out. But uh, I think Sam and I are planning on doing an early live stream again on Saturday for European okay. viewers who this is the middle of the night for them. So they normally can't watch our live stream. So uh, last week we did a, a early one, like four o'clock uh, our time, because that's actually nighttime for them. So I think we'll be doing that again Saturday, but we'll see what happens. All right. Catch you all later. All right. God bless.